Welcome to the channel and welcome to Warhammer 40k 8th edition. It's Gene Steeler Colts versus Space Marine. Welcome to the channel. In this battle report, we visit Babington 5. Now, those of you who've been following the channel for a while know that Babington 9, know that the Babington system itself has been under attack by multiple Xenos threats and the forces of chaos. But here on Babington 5, it's been quiet. It's been too quiet. And now this installation, the Cradle Installation 17, has gone quiet. Babington 5 is uh, rather unique because um, you've got these badlands up and away to my left there, which get higher and higher and higher. A vast mountain range in the middle of Babington 5, which is ringed by the Cradle system. This is Cradle 17. And the Cradles ring the Badlands so that they can um, throw off their sensors into the mountains just to see if uh, there are any problems, any Xenos, any dodgy things come racing out of the Badlands. It's, 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 uh, it's a part of the planet that which is unexplored and dangerous and there's lots of myths and legends about the Badlands. So the Cradle system has been erected around the outposts of uh, the Badlands to um, keep the planet safe. And this installation, Cradle 17, has gone quiet. Now my Space Marine chapter, known as the 13th, are in system. have been battling away on Babington 9 for some time. And because no one expects any threats on Babington 5, um, the planetary governor has um, asked for some reinforcements, has asked uh, the Space Marines to come and uh, check out what's going on here. And because no one is expecting any threats, we're not sending in a big force. We're sending in a rather small force just to see maybe uh, it's a downed comms tower. Maybe it's something completely, um, completely innocent, maybe. But uh, obviously not, because the Gene Steeler cults are going to be on the channel for the first time. So as you can see, um, the edge of um, the cradle is uh, all been flattened down by the Adeptus Mechanicus. And you've got this cobblestone floor uh, around uh, the edge of the installation. And going up to the Badlands on the left. Plenty of cover on this table. If you're in the rocky outcrops or any part of the scenery here, you're going to get plus one to your cover save. Plenty of barricades around the centre of the battle grid as well. Any infantry unit within one inch of a barricade gets a plus one cover save. Lots of large line of sight blocking terrain. Or oh, I should mention, this is a 2,000 point match play game. We're going to be playing Cleanse and Capture. That's the one that's uh, three cards a turn every turn. Because I want to cleanse this site of Gene Stealer Colts. And obviously the Gene Stealers want to capture it. Um, the Gene Stealer Colts will be deploying on this end. There's two... Uh, objectives there. I've got this side, Dawn of War deployment, one objective by the statues, one objective by the ammo dump over there, another objective by the ammo dump here, one out there. So Dawn of War deployment, 2,000 points. The Gene Stealer cults have come swarming out of the Badlands and the 13th are here to repel them. Uh, this battle map, shout outs, this battle map is from urbanmats.com, that's mats with a Z, they're very good. And coming to the channel for the first time is Mr. Mikey C, say hi Mikey C. Hello. Mikey C is from the north of the wall, you're Scottish. I am. You, <laughs> so thank you for coming down uh, from north of the wall. You've also got a blog spot, what's the name of the blog? I do, it's called St Andrew's Wargaming. St Andrew's Wargaming, if I press the right button something should be running along the bottom of the screen right now and um, you also have written some articles for Frontline Gaming, shout out to those guys while yeah, we're at it. Yeah. So how many, how often do you write for Mr. Mr. Reese and Frankie at Frontline? Um, Whenever it strikes me, to be honest, I'm currently working on some new stuff for the Orc Codex. Okay. It's just come out. Um, I post written battle reports there, the occasional unit review when the mood takes me. Okay. So written battle reports and unit reviews on Frontline Gaming, plus check out St. Andrew's Wargaming Gaming blog spot, plus you say you've been to quite a few tournaments. 
Yeah, I'm a fan. I enjoy a good tournament. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So, uh, and I should also point out that I've only played Gene Steeler Colts once in my life. I know it's shocking, and I've never played them in eighth edition. So this is probably going to go really, really badly for me. I hope not. I yeah, hope that we're going to put on a good show. They're pretty much the last army not to get a codex. Them and sisters. That's true. So it's still an index army. They're, they're a fun army, but they're not the most competitive, let's yeah. say. Yes. They're a fun... Yeah, they're... Well, yes. I just... I'm <laughs> looking over my shoulder at your army and it... I have no idea. So while we're on it, let's go and have a look at these armies. Right, this is bang on, 2,000 points worth of Space Marines. Because the second company are here, I'm gonna be using Ultramarines Chapter Tactics today. That's a plus one leadership and you can fall back and still fire. And uh, leading the army today will be Captain Dantioc and he's got Iron Resolve plus one wound and he ignores wounds on a six up. Now I know I should really be bringing Storm the Fire Warlord trait because it is the best one but I will forget that rule all the time and get shouted at. So I've given him Iron Resolve as well. Dantioc leading this force into Cradle 17 and joining him is Lieutenant Krieger. I had to bring Krieger along because he's got a bit of a reputation for killing Tyranids. He's uh, taken out a couple of Carnifexes on his own in the past. So he is my dedicated uh, Tyranid killer and the Gene Stealer cult. Well, you know, he uh, he's probably going to do horribly now. Um, so they're heading up my HQs. Also coming along today is a new um, figure. This guy is Brother Captain Alexander Kovic. And Sorcerer Dave was on the channel last time and he brought me down this model. So thank you very much, Sorcerer Dave. Check out his YouTube channel. And he is the last surviving member of the Storm Guardians chapter who got picked up by the 13th and is joining the 13th. So Dante Ock and Krieger are here bringing along uh, Kovic for the first time to see what he can do, to see if he is worthy of joining the 13th, essentially. We've painted his armour in the colours of the 13th, and he's a jump captain with a storm shield. And uh, I've given him the Teeth of Terror Warlord trait, so it's a chainsaw with plus one strength, minus two, two damage, and you get D3 extra attacks with it. He's not a smash captain, he's sort of a mini smash captain, I, I, I guess. And that's how Dave painted him and handed him to me. So he's coming along. Um, then lots of troops, two units of uh, 10 scouts. One of them's got a power sword in because of weapon, because of points. I've got three Razorbacks, two assault cannons, two las cannons. And uh, this squad of Space Marines has got a melter combi melter. This squad of Space Marines has got a melter combi melter. And this squad of Space Marines has got a melter and a sergeant with a power fist. Because I haven't seen a sergeant with a power fist for a very long time. And a flamer. And then I've got a dreadnought with missile and uh, twin link lance cannons. Um, a big squad. Ten man squad of Hellblasters. Because it's Primaris and you've got to bring Hellblasters because the internet tells me so. But I brought Assault Plasma Incinerators. These are the Strength 6 versions, not the Strength 7 versions. And they're rapid fire. Assault 2. Assault 2 at 24 inch range, Strength 6. That's unless you overcharge them. And then two units of Inceptors with the Assault Bolt. It's because I really like Inceptors. Uh, they're mobile. They throw down a lot of DACA. They're Toughness 5. They can move around. So the Inceptors, the Jumpy Dudes, give me the mobility that I need. I've got some DACA in the backfield. I've got some screening units with the Scouts. Using Ultramarines Chapter Tactics today so I can fall back and shoot. But mainly because of narrative reasons. Honestly, I wanted to bring Salamanders. Because Salamanders are quite pokey with all those free rerolls. But because I've got the second company here. And they are founded using the uh, Ultramarines Gene Seed. I'm sticking to the narrative using Ultramarines chapter tactics. It gives me nine command points because I've got a battalion and, sorry, I'm lying, I've got eight command points. I was, the original list did have an extra unit of jumpy dudes. I broke them up into three units of uh, four, but this is just a single battalion, which is eight command points. So there we go. Yes, I'm glad I spotted that right at the beginning. And uh, let's go and have a look at the Gene Stealer Colts. Right, this is a lot of bodies. This is just south of 2,000 points worth of Gene Stealer Colts. It's two battalions and the one with all the elites. I think that's the Vanguard. So there's 14 command points to play with. 
Mr. Mikey C. Uh, so Gene Steeler Colts. So you can put half of them, up to half of them in reserve and they can pop out on the table in turn two and you make a dice roll to see what happens when they pop out on the table, right? Yes, so they have the Cult Ambush roll, yes. which is basically most of my infantry can go in reserve. Yes. And as you say, when they turn up a roll of dice, um, depending on what it is, you really want a five or a six. Yes. Five or a six allows you to deploy at least nine inches from an enemy unit. Yeah. On a five, the unit either gets to shoot again yes. or can move D6. Yes. On a six, they get to make a normal move. So you can, certainly with units like the Gene Steelers, you can pretty much guarantee a charge. So you can, put, if you get a six, you pop them out on the table, then you more than nine inches away, then you move them. Yes. And Gene Steelers move eight. And get to advance and, and still get to charge. Advance and then still charge. When it, yeah, okay. So that's that's what Gene Steeler Colts do, right? Pretty much. Plus their psychers, plus lots of other... Anyway, what am I looking at? Who's the Warlord? What's going on here? So the Warlord yes. is actually going to be the Primus here. Okay. Um, and he has the Needle Pistol, Bone Sword, and Toxic Injector Claw, which is basically wounds on a 2+, plus right. in combat. He's got... I've decided to go for the Chapter Approved tactic, which is Focus of Adoration, which means any Gene Stealer Cult unit within six inches can perform a heroic intervention. Nice, okay. Yep. Um, any Gene Stealer Cult within six inches of him? Within six inches of him can okay. perform a heroic intervention. So I don't necessarily need to charge him. I could charge a unit next to him and then... Yep, yeah, and okay. then I like can it. heroic in. So... Um, Is he a psyker? He's not. Okay. He, he gives me bonuses to the cult ambush roll. Right, okay. So that's why he's, I've got two of them. One, the one in orange is the warlord. The other is just the bare bones. He's, he's same war gear. Primaris, because um, you were telling me off camera that basically you roll a dice for that cult ambush roll, but if these guys are attached to a squad, then you get three dice and you can re-roll it. If I use the stratagem. Ah. So normally they just get a re-roll on the table. Yes. If I use the stratagem, which is called Meticulous Uprising. Yes. A normal unit gets to roll two dice. If they've got a Primus coming in with them, they can roll three dice. Right. And he does... The way I play it is he gets to re-roll one of the dice. The right. way other people play it is he has to re-roll them all. I, I'm not sure which one applies. I always play re-rolling one. Because okay. I think getting six rolls on the table is way too powerful. Sure, we'll play whatever so, you play. And the Cult Ambush, um, as you mentioned, when I bring a unit in from Cult Ambush, I can select a character and I just roll once for both. Okay. Um... I've got a Patriarch, who's right. similar to a Broodlord. Yes. Um, normally he's my Warlord, but he tends to go after the enemy and die, so right. I don't want to give up Warlord. I've got a Magus, yes. who is... Sorry, he... I should say the Patriarch has Mass Hypnosis, right. which is an 18-inch power, select an enemy unit, and they cannot fire Overwatch. At and, all? At all. And, <laughs> they, and they must fight last Whoa. in the fight phase. Okay, so that's a bit pokey. Yeah, that is very good for taking that on is very pokey. units. So these two are the two Primuses, mm -hmm. and he's he's a what? What's he's he a on? Magus, so he is a, he's a psyker, psyker, right? As well, yes. his psychic power is I know it, Might from Beyond, which right. is select a Gene Steeler Cult unit and get plus one attack and plus one strength. Nice on that unit. So and that would include the Gene Steelers. Yes, any plus one attack, any plus one gene steel occult unit. I believe it Whoa. might just be infantry, but yeah, okay. anything. How many psychic powers can they do? One, only one each. Okay, so um, it's that or smite. It's that or smite. He also has a nice special rule, All which right. is any if they are tar well, it won't apply here, but if they if a unit within six of him is targeted by an enemy psychic power, yes. they can attempt to dispel it as okay. if they were a psyker. Okay. It won't apply here. Though. No, I don't, didn't bring the psychers. I didn't mm. realise he was so pokey. Otherwise, yep. I'd have bought seven of them. Um, my final <laughs> HQ unit is an Acolyte Icon Ward, right. who has the Relic Icon of the Cult Ascendant. Right. So, combined with his normal abilities, what this means is any unit within six inches gets a six-up save against any wounds. Right. Feel no pain. They get plus one strength. Right. And they get to reroll failed morale tests. Within six inches. Within six inches of him. Nice. I like it. So that's my fifth HQ. Yes. For troops, I have three units of uh, neophyte hybrids. I've got one with shotguns and two flamers, just because right. I like shotguns. They're not that useful, but they're Who fun. Who doesn't like a shotgun? Yeah. I've got a unit with a mortar team. Yes. And I've got a unit with a las cannon team and two grenade launchers. On St. Andrew's Wargaming, I recently saw your blog posts where you painted these things up. Did you paint these up for this fight? Yes, you I did, did actually. Well I, done. I figured I needed um, 
a bit more firepower. So I thought <laughs> if, I, if I can hide the neophytes, because most of my games, the neophytes spend most of the game hiding to yes. grab objectives and yes. allow me to survive the game. So I figured, why not give them some mortars I to, like it. to do some damage. That's good. It's beautiful. The other troops units, I have four units of Acolyte hybrids. I've right. got a six-man unit at the front here. So right. I just bare bones. I've got an eight-man unit with two rock saws. Do these so guys have rending claws? They do have rending claws. Like the gene stealer rending yes, claws. Yes, they do. How many attacks do they have each? They have two base. Right. And they also have a cultist knife, which gives them an extra attack but, if they use it. But it's not rending. Okay. Because rending claws are minus one and then on six. Six is to win, they're minus four. Just like gene stealers? Yes. Okay. And <laughs> so I've got two rock saws, which are... Pretty much power fists that don't suffer minus one to hit. Don't suffer. And I think they're minus four AP. I'll double check that. Okay. Uh, I have a unit of ten with two rock drills. Um, right. You very kindly, I made a silly mistake in which I'd taken two of the heavy weapons, right. rock weapons out to paint them up. Okay. And um, forgot to bring them. Okay. They're sitting on my painting tray. So I'm going to use the banners. You've kindly let me use them. Okay. Two rock drills. Yes. These are essentially, again, similar to power fists. But if a target is wounded, you roll a dice. On a two up, the unit takes a mortal wound. Right. And then on a three up, then a four up, then a five up, etc. Right. So you can do mortal wounds. Yes. I've then got a unit with two rock cutters. Right. Which again, good melee weapons. And if you a target is wounded and you roll a d6, if you score higher than the number of wounds they have remaining, yes. they are slain. Yes. Outright. So we're saying one of the banners is the special weapon. One yes. of the banners is a special and weapon squad. for those people. Just yep. to... Yep, okay. For the rest of the battalion, I've got two scout, cult scout sentinels, right. one auto cannon, one heavy flamer. And they work just like sentinels? Just like sentinels. Right. I've got a goliath truck, which is two twin auto cans and a heavy stubber. Nice. This transports ten people. So if it moves, is it hitting on five? Yes. It is. It's not yeah, great. Yeah. I've got a cult layman russ, which has got the battle cannon and three heavy bolters. Do they have the lumbering beer moth? The anymore? Do they have? They do. Um, they, they do get that. So good. if I move less than half, good. I get to shoot the back can twice, and I don't suffer the penalties. It's good that you guys get that because it's the vehicle that does it, right? It's supposed to be a stable firing platform, yes. the backbone of the Imperium, or mm -hmm. in this case, the backbone of the uh, Gene Stealer Cult Army. Yep. Okay. And in my Vanguard attachment, I have two units of Gene Stealers, pure strain Gene Stealers, <laughs> one unit of twelve, one yep. unit of fourteen. And four aberrants with the rock hammers. So these are multiple wound models. Aren't these they? are th two wounds. Yes. And they ignore um, minus one damage for any weapons that hit them to a minimum of one. Nice. So things like auto cannons, um, overcharging. Um, yeah. Plasma cannons will only do one wound on them. Yeah. So if um, I if I hit you with a blast cannon and it's damage three, that'd be damage two. Yeah. It'll yeah. still kill me, but it'll still kill you. It's, but it's, a, it's a nice thing. The rock hammers, I think they go up to strength ten and a flat three damage. Nice. So I like good. it a bit like a thunder hammer. Yes. I I do like gene stealers as well. Um, gene stealers are. Well, you're Gene Steeler cults. So it looks like your cult has actually come along quite a way. You've been infecting the population of Babington Five for quite some time, and you've actually been able to go all the way through the strains up to stage four and give birth to uh, pure strain Gene Steelers there. Who was the warlord again? The warlord is, is going him. to be the Primus in orange. Not the Patriarch. No, he tends to die yes. quite easily, so it, it stops me giving up warlord. Well, with this psychic thing. power thing, which stops me firing Overwatch? Yes. Are you, yeah, but he's a character. I wish I brought an assassin. Oh, the other thing yes. I forgot, the Gene Stealer cults have a rule called Unquestioning Loyalty. Right. Um, if a character is wounded, if he's within three inches of another Gene Stealer cults unit, yes. uh, on a four-up... He ignores the wound and a model from the unit is removed. So they, they're basically human shields for right. the characters. Does that work on the Patriarch as well? It works on, yeah, all the characters in nice. the army. Okay. So basically the characters are kind of hard to remove. So this is a horde which is going to be coming at me. But they haven't got great saves, I seem to remember. Most of it's like a five up. No, I think the best armor save I have in the army is a four up with okay. the Patriarch, excluding vehicles. So this is uh, a, the classic glass hammer. It's supposed to hit really hard, but if it gets hit back, it shatters. If you get a good cult ambush roll, it hits like a ton of bricks, right. and then it just falls apart to okay. enemy fire. Like most of my arm is a five up save, so it's not brilliant. Okay. So we'll move on to deployment. 
hopefully, so one of two things are going to happen here. Either I'm going to get smashed in turn two, turn three, or the 13th are going to hang on there for a noble victory. Let's go on to deployment, find out what happens. And we deployed for this 2,000 point game of cleanse and capture. The 13th have rocked up to uh, outpost Cradle 17 on the edge of the Badlands and they've found out why it's gone quiet. The place is swarming with Jinxtil cults who have pulled back, the battle lines are drawn and it is about to kick off. So, what I've done is I've put every single thing on the table, nothing in reserve because I'm aware of that cult ambush thing. Um, there could be units popping up all over the place and I need to build an effective screen and I really need first turn. So the two units of jumpy dudes, which would normally be in high orbit hurtling down, are here, hoping that I get first turn so I can push forward and push the screen out a bit further. Because as you can see, we've got scouts here. Scouts have come pouring out of the entranceway to Cradle 17. Scouts on that objective. Scouts over here. I've put the Hellblasters over here because I needed something on that objective there. And... That's it, basically. And this squad, I didn't know what to do with them. So I've kept them back with the Dreadnought, hoping if stuff comes in in front of me and noms away some of the other units, then the Hellblasters can shoot and shoot effectively. And honestly, if there turns out to be lots of Gene Steel Colts jumping into this corner here, at least it's a long way away from the rest of my army. And let's face it, he needs to deal with the unit hell blasters because they can sting. Um, the unit of troops with the flamer and the multi and the combi melter are out here, but the other two units of troops are inside these transports. There's Captain Kovic. Um, he's not in charge of this force, even though he has the teeth of terror relic. We're going to be keeping an eye on that one to see how effective he can be. There's Danteok, Danteok and Krieger. They're leading this expedition and, of course, giving me the reroll hit rolls of one. Reroll wound rolls of one aura with a captain lieutenant combo. And looking at across the line, there's not very many Gene Stealer Colts on the table yet because, you, um, Mike, you see you put eight in reserve? Eight units in reserve. So I was uh, a lot of gamey, forcing you to deploy most of your army yeah. before I deployed. Yes. I did try and convince you to put these scouts in your deployment zone, but yeah. oddly enough, you weren't having that. So mm -hmm. they. They all have to be dealt with quickly so I can get some good ambush rolls. Yes. Is there anyone inside this truck? Yes, there's a unit of 10 Acolyte hybrids with the rock drills. In that one. And then there's some more guys here. Yeah. And these are your squishable units. Neophyte hybrids. Yes. Rolling across, holding the central position. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you tuck this Layman Russ in. I think it's out of line of sight from, from most shooty. Yes, it's it's a nice unit, but if I don't get first turn, it tends to die horribly as the only really big threat firepower yeah. threat. So yeah. I've hidden that a bit. A lot of good line of sight coming over here. Yes. Some good stuff over here, I think, unless you move your vehicles, you can target the truck, but these are okay. Yeah. So... We'll, we'll see if I can hold out. If I don't get first turn, then I have to weather two tons of shooting. Yeah. And we'll see if I can, uh, before I hit back. But if you get first turn, you're going to be dropping in here. And if you get some good dice rolls, then you're going to be moving. Not on first turn anymore. Not on first turn. Cult ambush. They, with the recent FAQ. Right. It used to be Gene Stiller Colts were pretty much the only army that could come in from reserve turn one. Right. Um, but they've changed that now. But don't worry, it'll be fixed in the codex. <laughs> well, we just have to wait for the codex. Whenever that codex Whenever is Whenever that is. You know when they drop the indexes right at the start, they said, we will promise you all the codexes will be here within a year. I would. I was actually hoping to get it before this game, but orcs have just come out. Yeah. And, um, if we get it this year, I'll be happy, but I'm not certain. No, we shall see. I'm, I suspect there might be some new units, because that uh, mm -hmm. new Aberrant and the Tooth or Claw box set, Looks quite yes. juicy to me. And the um, we get some new aberrants, some multi kit, multi part aberrants nice. in that kit as well. Which they're we've pretty much got four models for the aberrants. So so maybe it's a good thing that uh, Games Workshop are holding out for now. Maybe you're gonna get seventy eight new units and a brand new shiny codex. This will be as glorious as the old codex. I mean, if one of the one of the things I love about this army, even if it doesn't play well at the moment, it looks amazing the models are some of the best i think they've produced and they, they're pretty much the newest army yeah. as far as i'm aware so i think they're a really nice force so i'm looking forward to a good codex it is very lovely a terrible beauty has been born outside cradle 17 
So now we need to figure out who's got first turn. So there's a dice, sir. Um, do you want to roll for tension's sake? Because I get plus one. I beat you. You do the get drop. plus one. I need a big roll here. Please roll a one. You rolled a four. four. Can I beat a four? 50-50. Plus one to this dice roll, because even though it's a normal one, we're using chapter approved to see who goes first. I rolled a two. So two plus one is three. I don't beat you. I need to try and steal oh, from please, you. Please, if you do this, I'm going to be so annoyed. <laughs> don't try this at home, kids. Stealing is bad. Oh. One. So the 13th are beaten to the drop here. The gene stealer cult will get to go first mm -hmm. as they try and descend, defend the cradle 17. Let's go on to turn one. We had some scout moves from these two sentinels. These are the orders for the cult in turn one. Secure objective three, which I control. Secure objective four, which the gene stealer cult control. An overwhelming firepower. Destroy something with shooting. Now, interestingly enough, Mikey C pulled advance in turn one, but he doesn't want to lumber out of his deployment zone with some of his big shooter units. So he's already spent two command points to burn that and draw another card. In all honesty, I have so few stratagems to use that I may as well use the command points. Yeah, early. you've got enough of them. Yep. Right, here we are after the Gene Steeler Colts movement phase, all very simple. The left flank pushes up nice and quick, and the Scout Sentinel with this unit of Gribblies also pushes up. Nice and quick. These um, these two uh, squads staying still here. There's objective four, so you definitely score a point for that one. Objective three is this one in here, so you're not getting that one this turn. However, overwhelming firepower and first blood is up for grabs. So the layman Russ has moved round under half, so it can fire twice. It's got shots down at the Hellblasters and a shot at the Dreadnought on the right there. And the Scout Sentinel came piling through the gap as well to try and get these uh, Scouts, some of my front screen there. So definitely a potential to get uh, overwhelming firepower here. Uh, so any shenanigans happening at the end of the movement phase, Mikey C? Yes, I'm going to spend another command point on uh, Return to the Shadows. Okay. So this unit leaves the board and gets deployed in my next turn using the Cult Ambush. Right. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because of the new reserve rules FAQ, I simply didn't have the points to put them in. Okay. So what I can do is now, rather than switch log it across the board, yes. I can take them off and bring them in the Cult Ambush. And uh, it has to be in the next turn though. So hopefully I can get into a better position with them rather okay. than spend three turns trying to get across the board. So that unit disappears into the shadows. Now we're on to the psychic phase. Have you got any psychics going on? There's a yes, guy down here. I have a psyker here. Right, so this primar Primus is casting might from beyond onto... Who are these? Acolyte hybrids. Acolyte hybrids. Need a seven. Good luck. And that's a six. Do you want a command point? I'm not. Uh, it's not worth it. That would have given plus one strength and attack, right? Yes. So that's the end of this psychic phase. Now let's shoot some guns. Right, opening up the shooting phase, this squad back here, which could reach out and touch the scouts that came through the doorway, killed one of them. And the last cannon in that squad is firing across at the assault cannon Razorback. You need a four to hit, so. And, and that's that... a hit. Strength nine, toughness seven. Is um, command point? No, I think I'll save it because I want to get good shots with the flamers. Okay. So I, I don't really... It's a bit yeah, early in the shooting yeah. phase to burn a command point already, so, so the last cannon round just bounces. Yeah. Next up, this, these neophyte hybrids are going to unload shotguns at these scouts that just came out through the door. We've got 16 shots with the shotguns. I am in half range, so yes. it will be strength 4. Nice. So I'll force the hat. Oh. That's not good. Out of 16 shots, only 4 hits. Strength 4, toughness 4. Force to wind. And oh, come on! One wound out of 16 shotgun shots. Fours. Yeah, I failed to save, though, one. for you. And there's two flamers in that squad as well. Yep, two so, flamers. This is why I was saving my command points so I can get overwhelming. Uh, eight eight hits. I'll take. Three more guys to get through. Wounding on fours. And the flame spreads around <laughs> them. And only three wounds. <laughs> so three, four up saves. I haven't made a save yet, though. No. Uh, but I make all of them. The uh, deployment zone.tv logo is a six, keeping me safe there. 
So only two dead in that squad. That was. I thought that was pretty much a guaranteed overwhelming firepower myself. But you know, you know what? I so did I do? But uh, the Emperor protects. Yes. Coming from this side of the battle grid across to this side of the battle grid, picking on scouts one more time. Heavy flamer washing into these scouts. Number of auto hits is one auto hit. At strength five, AP minus uh, one. Let's CP this one. Okay. I'll spend it now. Okay. Oh. <laughs> of that's, course. That's that's not good. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Obviously you haven't charged your weapons yet or fully flamed the tanks yet. Can, oh, the can, flame attacks, what? Can I get rid of this dice? Well, let's burn that dice. <laughs> it's triple one. From that scout sentinel across to this scout sentinel, <laughs> hopefully he could do better. What have you got here? Auto oh, cannon. cannon. So it's hitting on fives, it's right? It's hitting on fives. Going into these scouts. Nothing. Nothing. Uh, Shots just going wide, left, right, all over the place. Right, where next, Mikey C? You need overwhelming firepower. I do, I do. So, um... I'm going to put the Heavy Stubber and the Twin Auto Cannon from this unit yes. into the Scout Squad here. Three Scouts. And the Squad Inside, I don't need to roll now, but the Squad Inside will put the pistols into this unit okay. here. What's this called? That's a Goliath Truck. A Goliath Truck, okay. Lovely um, model. It is a lovely model. What guns, of, what are we firing then? So I've got Twin Auto Cannon, I've okay. got fives because I moved yes. into the three Scouts. Yes. That's one hit. Strength seven? Is seven, it normal or a cannon? Doesn't wound. I promise. We we threw the other dice away in the bin. We did. We, we did. We um, <laughs> now a heavy stubber. Okay. Go. Okay. Is this heavy as well? This is heavy as you well. You get a so hit. One hit. One hit. Strength four. Maybe. Uh, yes. So that's a wound. AP normal. No AP. I need a four. I make a four. Is that the Goliath truck? That's fire? the Goliath truck done. I'm um, beginning to feel sorry for you. <laughs> The people who read my blog will know this is pretty regular role oh, right. for okay. me. So this is, um, okay. I can I can snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. This is probably why you bring lots of gene stealers because you can't shoot. So instead you just tear people apart. I just go for volume. If you're, if you're <laughs> getting like 40 attacks on the charge, at least some of them are going to hit. Nice. Um, so pistols yes. are going to go into the squad here. Um, okay. I'll shoot these guys first because if my mortar team... It's probably not going to kill them. If I can do some damage to them, um, I should just smoke them. <laughs> so yeah. hitting on fours. And earlier on, actually, you were saying, shall I smite them or shall I do the thingy bob? I thought, and you thought, yeah, you've got enough gun to kill them. I've got more than enough firepower to kill one yeah. unit five scouts. I won't need to smite them. Yes. Um, so yeah, that was that was an error. And my smite <laughs> would have gone off as well on a six. Yeah. So force to hit. That looks a bit more healthy. Uh, and what are these pistol strength? Three. Okay. So five to win. It's uh, one. <laughs> one. One with no AP. Nope. One, one and save. then another six from this squad. This squad. And I'll roll the, um, I think he's in range. Yeah, I'll roll the uh, Magus as well. It's the okay. same roll. Okay. So I believe maybe he hits on threes, but I don't think it's going to matter much. Okay, if you're doing them all together. Yeah. Three hits. Four hits. Four hits. Fives. Uh, one wound. One wound. Four up. No, oh, you killed one. a scout. Well done. Kill one. So the mortar firing up and owner over into the unit of three. How many shots? It gets... Two. So two I'm not shots. killing it. Hitting on... Fours. Two hits. Strength Forced to wounds. Strength four, is it? Two wounds. Two oh. wounds. Nice. Uh, two, four, AP. No AP. Well, <laughs> I say boxcars. You need... What? I'm teach using... me. You need to teach me how to roll your dice so they do sixes. I'm rolling the same dice, fun. honestly. Right, last thing left to fire is the Layman Russ. Now, uh, Mikey C debated about putting some shots into the Hellblasters, which he really needs to kill. All this squad of five tactical marines down here decided to go for the five tactical marines because you really need overwhelming firepower. Uh, yeah, if I, it's my last... <sighs> It's my last yeah. chance to get it. So you've got nine heavy bolter shots there. Should we do them first? Okay. Um, are they minus one to hit? They moved? are. I moved. It, okay. it doesn't... Um, Lumbering Behemoth or whatever it doesn't calls doesn't apply them. to them. Yep. So five to hit. Yep. And that's much better. That was four that's hits. Four Strength hits. five versus Three toughness wounds. four. And two you do wounds. get two wounds. Right, minus this one. unit, it's minus one, but this unit is within an inch of a barricade, so it's plus one again. So basically three ups. Two, 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 two wounds, yeah. And I make both of them, yeah. but now we have the battle cannon, which is 2d6 shots, because you moved half. Yep, yeah, this is where I should have saved the command point. Yeah. Double six. 
four. Four, four uh, shots. And you don't suffer the minus. I don't. So hitting on fours. To three hits. That's okay. Straight command points. Eight. eight. So two to wind. Three, three wins. wounds. Minus two. Minus two. So minus one because of the barricade. Fours. <laughs> the Emperor protects. That's the end of the Gene Steeler cult shooting phase. That could have been better. Only if you can call it a shooting phase. You kill three scouts. Yeah. It's better than one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, are you charging anywhere? There's got to be some charges. Yes, there's definitely going to be some Where charges. Where are we charging? We are going to put the truck into the scouts to yes. start with. Then we will put in the uh, nice. acolyte hybrids. Right. And we'll do overwatch in a second. Let's yep. see if the truck makes it in. Eating the overwatch there. Don't roll snake eyes. No, okay, the truck gets in. Let's see if the Acolyte Hybrids get in as well. They needed a seven. A seven, I believe. And we'll do a watch in a second. And they get in, that's yeah. nice. The truck makes it in here, and actually a grenade managed to explode a part of the armor before it came wheeling in, so it's lost three wounds. The Hybrids? Yep, Acolyte Hybrids. hybrids. Made it into the squad of scouts, and then trying to clear away the screen, this thing tried to charge them and that unit of three, but only managed to get into the unit of three. So the scout sentinel all over the center of the installation, along with the little dudes. So the screen getting whittled away and whittled away. And then over here, this scout sentinel has declared a multi-charge as well into the hell blasters as well as into the scouts. Basically, it's eight inches to get into the hell blasters, yep. which you want to try and get to. And if not, you're going to hit the scouts. Even though you can fall back and shoot annoyingly, yes. at least if you're minus one, it gives me a better chance of my rust surviving. Yes, so um, I'm going to overwatch and <clears throat> I'm going to overcharge. Right, this could go horribly wrong, but let's do it anyway. Sixes to hit, sixes to hit, sixes to hit. There's two ones. One's definitely one's dying, dead. even if I reroll that. Sixes to hit and sixes to hit. So I get one hit. Um, I would typically, if I'd have got one one with that dice roll, I'd have command point re-roll it, but there's no point because he's going to die anyway. So one hit gets through. Um, that gets my strength up to seven. So three to wind. It wounds. At no, eight, no way. No, I eight, don't. AP get minus saved. four to yeah. damage. I don't get saved. So I didn't I kill him. I don't have two up armor sentinels. Let's chuck a grenade, and then do the other shots off camera. So I pulled one of the Hell Blasters away, and uh, one of the bolt guns actually did another wound on the Armoured Sentinel before he came flying in. Right, you need an 8 to get to the Hell Blasters. And no. you get a 6, so you're going into the Scouts. Anyway. Right, let's fight. Right, starting over on the left flank, these Acolyte Hybrids are fighting the Scouts. Now, they have two attacks each with their Rending Claws, so we're going to do that first. Mm -hmm. And you're hitting on a... Three. Three, nice. Three in combat, four in shooting. And these are basically like Gene Stealer ending claws. Yeah. This sh should sting. Not when I'm rolling like that. Okay, six hits. Uh, strength four. Yep. Four sixes are rending. Uh, no mm. rending, but five wounds at minus one. Five wounds at minus one. There's only four scouts left, so this is five up saves. And uh, they're all dead. They're dead. Even before we did the knives, because nice. they've got extra attacks. Then the hybrids consolidated forward uh, three inches. And now I'm not paying any command points to interrupt. And uh, we're now going to have some weird charges going on because the truck charged. So it gets to move three inches. Yes. And then it gets to consolidate. Then it gets to consolidate. Yes. To tie that up. And it's tied up this Ooh. vehicle and this vehicle cannot shoot. I can... I wonder if I can get into... No, too far away. If I can get into, if I can get into that as well, but it's too far away. Yeah. But that's still a very good move. You've wiped out the scouts, which is first blood, mm -hmm. and you're going to stop the Razorback last cannon from shooting. Right, so uh, now we're going to go on to this fight over here. Just three scouts. Um, yep. It's going to be limited the number of attacks you can get in. However. Yes. But these guys were hitting on fours and wounding on fives. They're only strength three, and the Sentinel only had one attack, killing one of the scouts, so they're still alive. And uh, I managed to kill one of the Acolytes back again. And then over here, um, the Scout Sentinel failed to wound the Scouts, and my Scouts failed to wound the Scout Sentinel. And that's the end of everything. That's the end of turn one. We have a morale test to take on this unit of Scouts here. Mm -hmm. They lost three. 
plus five because of ultramarines i'm standing firm we do not bend and so at the end of turn one the gene stealer cult secure objective four and first blood making it two points to zero but more importantly they're pushed up way past the halfway line beginning to get a strong strong board control and uh, well the rest of the gene stealer coats will jump in in turn two so the 13th need to push back now and push back hard. Here are the orders for the 13th in turn one. High Command want me to defend Objective 6, which is over in the Gene Stealer Cult's deployment zone. So uh, I'm not sure why they want that, but that isn't going to happen. Area Denial, there's no Gene Stealer Cults within six inches of the center, so that should be a point. And Blood and Guts kill something in the assault phase. Off with their heads. Well, I'll try and do that one. Here we are after the 13th movement phase and oh my, that took a long time. I'm so conscious of the fact that there's a lot of cultists about to come spilling out from underground, spilling out from the shadows and I need to push that screen back. I also need to score blood and guts. So the unit that were here have broken out of combat and the center of the table is over there somewhere. So there's no gene stealer cults within six inches of the center, there's a point. And kill something in the assault phase. Well, the scouts have come round from there and Captain Kovic has jumped up and over. And the idea is they go wheeling into this squad and kill them. Um, hopefully, if I don't utterly annihilate them in the shooting phase, the idea with my guns is just leave one of them left alive, which would be very nice. And then I can definitely get my blood and guts. Um, the second squad, of, this squad of Jumpy Jews just shuffled because I didn't know where to go. I didn't know where to put them. But this squad did advance and I got the fat six all the way up the table. Two reasons for that. One, their weaponry is assault weaponry, so I can fire them, but minus one to hit. And there is a las cannon team back there. And two, I'm trying to push the screen forward as far as I can. I'm aware that some gene stealers could pop in there. And then if Mikey C gets a five or six, then he can move them and advance them. And then he could come charging in. So I'm trying to push that screen back, which is why the Razorback went round that way. Rather than just pulling straight back into the corner, it's why the Razorback is all the way over there. Now, there were two squads inside both of these Razorbacks with Melter, Commie Melter, so they've dropped out. So that should be enough to get rid of that truck and with the firepower with that unit there and with the firepower that unit there. And then moving up with this squad to push the screen back, moving up with the scouts to push the screen back. But again, I'm aware that gene stealers could drop in again, nine inches away and then move. And then when they appear, if he gets a five and six and then in Mikey C's movement phase, they can move again. The gene stealers could potentially move 20 inches or so. So uh, very, very scary. You wanted to mention, we did do the attacks with the Razorback here off camera. Oh, yes. We just didn't do anything. Yeah, he uh, revved his engines and butted into the side of it. So, yeah, thanks for that. Um, so, yeah, I am fighting smoke right now. There's lots of demons and screeching and scritching from underground, from the shadows. But uh, now I need to kill what I can before the second wave smashes against me. Let's go on to the shooting phase. Yes, I reckon I'll have about four models left at the end of this turn, but there's a lot <laughs> more coming. Right, let's start with this unit of jumpy dudes firing into this squad here with the last cannon. Now they advance, so it's minus one to hit, but they each have six shots. So this is 30 shots, and I'm hitting on fours. And that looks really bad. Mm, yeah. 15 hits, perfectly statistically average. I'm strength five versus toughness three, so I'm wounding on threes. Now this would be AP minus one, but you're within an inch of a barricade, so you get your full armor save. Eight saves to make, of five up. One day squads, all fives and sixes. Uh, you get three. Five die. Yeah. Um, do they have any leadership modifiers and things like that? Uh, no, not what, at the moment. What is their leadership? I believe it's eight. eight They're actually pretty good. Are they? Um, okay. Yeah, it's eight with the leader. Still okay. alive. This your paint. It's okay losing five. Uh, maybe spending command points to keep them safe. I don't think any more shots are going to come out that way. Let's start on the left flank. So this squad here are within six inches of the captain and lieutenant. Let's fire the melter and the combi melter. Hitting on threes, they both hit. And of course, we made sure we're in melter range, but first we need to wound. So threes to wound. Rerolling ones, there's no ones. AP minus four. No save. No save. So 2d6 pick the highest. 
There's six. six. It's down to one left. Uh, no, I get rugged construction. Oh, I okay. get a six up save. On nice. These ones. No, no help at all. And then let's chuck a grenade. A grenade hurt you last time and hits again and doesn't wound. Toughness yeah. six, right? Yeah. And then the last thing left to fire is a couple of bolt guns. Two hits and no, no wounds. wounds. Right, I'm going to have to fire the second squad at you. Uh, melter combi melter coming in. Threes to hit and yeah. threes to wound. Yeah. And then 2d6 damage is seven yeah. rugged construction saves of six up on one remaining. Oh, you can think it's worth that. Seven sixes coming up. No. What? Does this thing one. blow up? It can blow up, yes. Please don't roll a six. You're right next to me. <sighs> no. The truck falls. The Goliath truck is melted to slag. There's 10 guys inside there. And on ones, there's one, one, two ones. Like they, uh... Yep, cocked. Yep. Okay, just one. one one. So one of them gets melted as well as they come piling out of the wreckage. So the Acolyte hybrids come spilling out of the melted truck and then the assault cannons on the Razorback spool up and pepper them with death, hitting on threes and re-rolling ones. That was 10 hits with the re-rolls. I'm strength six, your toughness. Three. Not four. No, they're, they're like really expensive guardsmen. Oh no, it's like okay. they are, but it's so expensive. So I'm winning on twos then and I'm re-rolling ones <laughs> because of the lieutenant is <laughs> there. So that's 10 wounds at AP minus one. What are you? Six five? up save. Well, really? oh, five up normally, yes. Oh no. Ooh, oh, not bad. Four sixes. Two. So there's three left, but I've got another assault cannon here and these guys. Now the jumpy dudes can't reach out and touch them, but they can touch them. So let's spool up the other Razorback and fire 12 more shots into these Acolyte hybrids. And they've been wiped out. And now we've got 30 shots from this squad. Reroll and hit rolls of one coming in to that squad here. It was 24 shots coming through because one of them couldn't uh, draw a line of sight, but I am in six inch range of these guys. So rerolling hit rolls of one, rerolling wound rolls of one. How many did I get through? 13 wounds. 13 wounds, 13 six up saves. Six up saves. And they are dead. That squad are wiped out as well. After those two units were wiped out, we move across to Cradle 17, where gunfire is erupting. The scouts managing to kill two of the acolytes there. And now the combi melter from this sergeant firing in at uh, that scout sentinel, hitting on a three and wounding on a three. No, it just bounces. Hmm. Never mind. So I'm going to spend a command point on Wisdom of the Ancients, which means my Dreadnought and any chapter units within six inches of them get to re-roll hit rolls of one. It applies to the Dreadnought as well. He did move, so his weapons are hitting on fours. I wanted that dead. It's not dead. Let's fire everything from the Dreadnought at that. I need to clear him out of the way so I can get in there with the charge, you see. So two Laz Cannons and one hit and it's strength nine. Wounds at AP minus three. No save. No save. D6 damage. <laughs> Five damage. How many do they have? Six, I believe. All right. So now the missile launcher really needs to hit. Uh, hitting on a... Rerolling re ones. Oh. And that's a hit. Strength eight. Yep. Wounds. AP minus two. Six up save. Come on. Ah. Oh. D6 damage. Yeah, Co come on, enemy. Does it blow up? I hope not. <sighs> no, the scout sentinel falls. See, if I had overwhelming firepower, I'd be in the lead now. You would be getting, I think, does I it didn't, work for I, sex? I didn't, I didn't want to keep mentioning overwhelming firepower. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Um... And the shooting phase is not over. Let's fire all these hell blasters into that scout sentinel because that's all I can reach out and touch. Yeah, one squad of Hellblasters made short work of that Scout Sentinel. That's the end of my shooting phase. Now I need Blood and Guts. So the Scouts are going to eat the Overwatch and charge in. We'll do the Overwatch off camera in a second. Let's see how far I make it. And that's 10, which is good enough. And then I'll leave a gap for Kovic to get in. And he goes a, a 9. Lovely stuff. We end up here after the charge phase. Um, I forgot there were two flamers in that squad, so two of the scouts died on the way in. We're going to start off with Captain Kovach, and uh, he's got four attacks, plus D3 for the Teeth of Terror. 
Um, look at that. <laughs> okay, so his first debut on the channel, he gets seven attacks and he's going to be hitting on twos. And he rerolls ones because he's a captain. I don't need to. Uh, he's up to strength five. This is a chainsaw, which is a plus one strength. So he's wounding on threes, threes but it is AP minus two. So any wounds I get through uh, yep. just cut straight through you. Um, six. Uh, he takes out six with his first swing. I've got one remaining. One remaining. So the scouts need to do it. Scouts have two attacks well each. Plus one for the I side. I think they can get in still. Yeah, three inch be Yeah. Okay. Uh, Please to hit, plus one for the scout. I was going to say, please fuck this. But... <laughs> Strength four versus toughness three. Because yeah. I really don't want you spending that command point to keep him alive and denying me blood and guts. So that's four wounds that's get through. Well, you wouldn't get blood and guts anyway if what? I died in the morale phase. Ah. So if, yes. I, if I pass all of these somehow, yes. I've denied you blood and guts. Okay, so um, four fives. Come on, dice gods, you owe me. They do owe you. <laughs> One. The gut guys, dead. dogs hate you today. They do. And that is blood and guts. Then the scouts pile forward, and that is the end of the fight phase. Now we're on to the morale phase. You lost a chunk in this squad back here. I lost five. I right. leadership eight. I don't think it's worth the CP. No. Eat them. No, I don't think so. Okay. Um, that's two CP, and I, I kind of need them for my cult ambushes. Right. Okay. So. Five plus five is ten. You're going to lose uh, two more, but at least you hold on to that last cannon. Do you know what? Yeah. So that's the silver lining. Let's keep one of the grenade launchers in the last cannon. Okay. Now that is the end of the Space Marines turn two. I get a point for area denial and a point for blood and guts. I've cleared away the front screen. It's two points each, but the rest of the Gene Stealer cults are about to come scrabbling up from underground. Let's go on to the cult's turn two. What? What? Do you know, when I said I'd have four models left at the end of this turn, I was yeah. kind of joking. But oh, yeah. you I've got, got a few. Magus, a couple. Three, ten, fourteen models left. Yeah. Excellent. That was, uh, that was a much more impressive shooting phase than mine, I must say. <laughs> Far more. Right. Let's find out in the cult's turn two. Here are Mikey C's orders this turn. Overwhelming firepower and defend three and secure three. And he spent two CPs again to ditch defend three, looking for something better. And he got defend one, which uh, is even worse. Yeah, potentially worse. Right, this is objective one that Mike needs to score, uh, defend. And this is objective three that he needs to score. And overwhelming firepower. At the end of his movement phase, uh, the Magos moved. And um, that's about it. Now we're going to call Ambush. Right, Mikey C, what's going on here? What are we doing? So the first reserves I'm bringing in are the non-Warlord Primus with the unit of 14 Gene Stealers. Okay. I'm going to spend a command point on Meticulous Uprising. Right. Which allows me to roll 3d6 on the Ambush table with the Primus. Okay. And I'm, I get one re-roll and ideally I'm looking for a 5 or a 6. Sweet, let's see what it's happens. Difficult. So... And there's a five. I get a free reroll anyway, so yes. I may as well if I can get the six. Yes. Nope. But there's but a five. I'll take the five. That which means that when you pop in, you can shoot or move. Or move D6. So let's which... drop this unit in, see where they end up. So we're going to explain this on camera because it's very interesting. You didn't want to drop some gene stealers in here mm. and then move them six because you were worried about also expect scan and getting lit up by them, right? If I drilled a six on the table, yes. the G I'd be allowed to move them. So I could have deployed them out with 12. Over here, right. And then moved up and advanced yes. at least nine inches, so a yes. three-inch charge. So your auspex scan wouldn't have shredded me. So the six allows you to move. Yes. But a five... I can move D6. Right, and because it happens at the end of the movement phase... I cannot move again. So yeah. what my guess is, I'm putting them here. Right. If I get a good advance roll... I, I, I really a, need to play for the objectives. And then a charge. I can get secure three here. Okay. By, they should be able to shred them. So, might not be the best decision, but I'm going to go for the... I'm going to play the objective game. Yes. Rather than just trying to kill you, because as it is, all spec scan, even with minus one to hit, as I saw, you they've only got a five up in one. Yeah. They'll just shred the yeah. gene steals. Okay, so you roll a six, yep. once you pop in, let's see how far these gene stealers are moving. So I need a good roll for here, please. A one. one. Do you want a command point reroll? <laughs> um, 
Or are you happy with this long bomb charge? No, because if we're playing this two inches, I'd need yeah. at least an 11. Yeah. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to spend the command point. Yeah, this is up and down yeah. on these terrain pieces. You are going up levels here. Five. Five, five will do. Better. Five will do. Each one of these hills, that's one inch up, another inch up, another inch up. Each layer is exactly an inch thick. This is a one inch thick insulation foam. That's yeah. how we've been playing it on the channel. So because of this, I get like... A Five inch charge on nice. them. So you should be able to score objective one. Oh. Let's face it, it's a ton of gene stealers. And the Primus right. gets to go four. Nice. So you can move up two. Right, this is the score that slinked off the cult ambush after turn one. Yes, this so this is the unit that went returned to the shadows. Yes. They have to come in this turn. Okay. And I don't get I have no command point rerolls left. Okay. So five or six, please. Two. What does that mean? Two. I need to double check. It's. Um, I believe that you. Right. I nominate two battlefield edges. Okay. And then have to roll. You you roll to decide which one I come in on. All right. So let's pick. What the back and the front. That battlefield edge. Yes. This battlefield edge. These two battlefield edges. Yeah. And then I pick one of them. You no. You roll a d6 on on a one to three. It'll be this side. Okay. On a four to six, it'll be that side. Uh, it's this it's side. This side so they coming have to on here. Nice. So when you call ambush, have to stay more than nine inches away from an enemy unit. So that unit appeared on this edge over yeah. there. The screen doing what it should be doing. Now we've got a unit of aberrants. Yeah, I'm debating whether to bring in all the reserves. I'm hoping I have enough left after my turn. I think I might leave the patriarch and the gene stealers so I can use the cult ambush again. Nice. Okay. Um, so let's roll for these guys. Yeah, and see I think I'll bring in the Labyrinths and the Primus, so I need a good roll with these guys. Uh, so please, I need at least one six this time. <laughs> please. Nope. So let's, I get a re-roll thanks to the Primus. Okay, yep. Come on. I rolled a one, I need a six. Good luck. Two. two. Okay, same. Same again. We'll do it. One to three is this side, four to six is that four side. Four to six is this side. Uh, you're coming four to six, nine inches yeah. away. Which is interesting. I think the only place you can stick them is uh, down here, coming out of the Badlands. I like it. Yep. The Aberrant coming out of the Badlands here, and now we've got the... who are these? I've got the Acolyte Icon Ward, yes. and I have the Neophyte Hybrids coming in. Okay. So... We need a six, come on. I need a six. So what I'm going to do... Yeah, I'm going to leave the Patriarch and the other Gene Steelers in reserve okay. just because. Okay. Um, so we'll see what I can roll. Come on, six. Oh, come on! <laughs> so, now you pick two table edges, Do I? and then I roll. Uh, well, you keep picking these two, so I'm going to pick those two. One, two, three, your edge, four, four there, over yep. there. Uh, they're so, coming out of the Badlands as well, which isn't too shabby, really. Yep. They could probably end up near those other aberrants. Right, so Gene Steeler cults live or die by the cult ambush roller, and unfortunately that was a bunch of ones, Mikey C not rolling very well. However, narratively speaking, this is perfect. The aberrants and uh, the Gene Steeler cults spilling out of the Badlands down towards this installation. He's going to need to make a lot of nine inch charges to make this army sing. We're not over yet though, still a long way to go. So let's go on to the psychic phase. So the Magos casting Smite on the Jumpy Dudes here, yeah. need a good roll. And that's a five, it passes, DK Immortal Wounds just. on the Jumpy Dudes. Come on, can, can you I kill, kill one? one at least? No, I can't. You can't kill one. One takes a wound. Yep. Opening up the shooting phase, this unit of Neophyte Hybrids are firing into this unit of three scouts down here. And the scouts get wiped out, finally scoring overwhelming firepower after two rounds of shooting. And then the crack grenade and last cannon from this team here decided to pick on the jumpy dudes and uh, just killed off the one on one wound. Still rolling low there, I'm afraid. Mm. Uh, what are we shooting at next? We are going to put the Russ yes. into the jumpy dudes. Okay, this will work, this will definitely work. They've got so much scary firepower and mobility, I kind of have to do something about them. And the rust stayed still this the time. The rust stayed still, so I get uh, heavy boat shots, hitting on fours. Yes. That's better. That's a lot better. Strength five, toughness five though, because that five, grab so armor. Yeah. I really need some rerolls in this armor. That's, that's good. Four at minus one. Four at minus one, four four episodes. 
You kill another Got jumpy dude. More. And then two D6 with the battle cannon, yeah. Big money, big money. Big bada boom. Uh, let's CP that, because okay. I haven't used one yet. Yes, yes. Five or Don't six, roll please. a one, you'll make me cry. Oh, Yay. I'll take that any Eleven day. Eleven shots. Five command points left, hitting on fours with this battle cannon. <laughs> oh, that's average. It's better average. Yeah, yeah. It's better than average. Strength eight, toughness five. So three to win. That's, That's good. Better That's okay. four at minus two. So four, five up saves, and I make two of them. Now each of these does D three shots yes. of damage, right? First one, dead, kills one. Dead jumpy dude. Second one. Oh, puts one down to one wound. So that's not bad. That's not bad. So any two jumpy dudes remain next to Cradle 17. Then we had Small Arms Fire hitting the Razorback doing no damage. Three wounds though. I could get three sixes, but yeah, yeah you made your armor. Holy armor kept me safe. The ceramic holding firm. And then Small Arms ricocheted out from here into the Hellblasters, putting one wound on the Hellblaster and killing a scout, making that charge a little bit longer. Because I, obviously I drew from that end there. Now that's the end of the shooting phase. You have scored overwhelming firepower. Yes. Now we're going to go on to the charge phase. So the Gene Stealers declared a multi-charge against these two squads there. There's a Flamer in this squad here, and I managed to kill two of the Gene Stealers as they came charging in. Let's see how far you get. You need a five to get these yep. Marines. Twelve will do it. That's oh, brilliant. They're, they're angry. And yeah, I'm going to put the Primus into the Scouts Right, yeah, well. let's do it as well. Primus is going to go into the Scouts. Yep. Yeah. He's angry. Wondering. He's angry too. Right, so the Gene Steelers make it into the squad of Tactical Marines and the Scouts, and then you started rolling dice rolls like this. I started rolling <laughs> for once. And I put the camera down because I thought you wouldn't be able to get in there, but they managed to get into the Scouts. Yep. The Amarants managed to get into the Hellblasters, rolling 11 or something like that. Yep. This guy, don't know what he's called. Uh, Primus didn't get in. Primus but didn't get in. I staggered him, so he's still in range to give them plus one to hit. So nice. they're still hitting on threes. So what, normally they'd be hitting on fours? Normally right? they'd be hitting on minus one. They, okay. they normally hit on a three plus, but their hammers are minus one to hit. Okay. So they're still three plus. So hitting on three. So basically, you can't shoot for Toffee, but you've hammered the right flank over here. This was unexpected, yes. getting them in. That was a good roll. So the scouts are dead, the tank marines are dead. So I've turned the camera on because you've got a nine inch <laughs> charge to make oh over God. here. I've still got my command point reroll oh, spin, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. if I get lucky here, we could swing things a little. Ooh. Eight, I need, let's like, CP it, I've got yeah. a 50 50 chance. Yeah. Oh, come on! <laughs> Finally fail one charge. See, I did. That's the I did. trick. I need to keep the camera on all the time. Yep. Right. Yep. Uh, Overwatch with the last cannon. Oh, yes. Uh, no. And uh, let's go on to the fight phase. Well, I'm glad your dice don't just roll once for me. Yes. That's good to know. Opening up the fight phase, starting off with these gene stealers here. Aware that I could pay two command points to interrupt. Um, he's consolidated or piled in at the start of the fight phase. We've got eight gene stealers hitting this squad here. Mm -hmm. And then the remainder of them hitting the four scouts there. So uh, Gene Steelers, how many attacks? Four, because I've got more than ten models nice. in the unit. Um, plus one to hit thanks to the Primus. Nice. So, and I'll be using the Rending Clause. Nice. So this is 24 attacks, so that's eight into the Tactical Squad, hitting on a two. Yep. And then you've got four attacks each, so you've got another eight attacks after this as well. But uh, they're all hitting. Every all single one. So... Fight phase, sorry, shooting phase not so good for you. Fight phase. Fight phase. Death, glorious death. And because the Acolyte Icon Ward is yes. made his charge, yes. I'm now strength five. Oh, okay. So I'm wounding on threes. <laughs> sixes are raining. Sixes are death. So f five sixes, and I'm picking up these space marines, basically. No, just sixes. It's not plus one to wound, it's plus one strength. Right, okay. So that is one, two, three. At minus four. Right? Three are dead, and All right, let's do, quite a few. Seconds. Let's roll these. We've got eight more to go. Yeah, they're dead. They're dead. They're dead. They're dead. <laughs> Everybody's dead, Dave. Everybody's dead. And then the Gene Stealers made short work of the scouts and uh, consolidated three inches forward. And then you select the squad, which are called Acolyte Hybrids. Acolyte Hybrids. They piled in three, consolidated three, pushing right up this flank. The Icon Ward, consolidated three, piled in three, which goes over here, throwing his buff 
on the Aberrant. So let's see if these Hell Blasters can survive yep. these uh, pick attacks. So eight attacks, yes. hitting on threes because of the Primus. Okay. And back to your normal dice roll. Back to my normal. Well, wounding strength on twos. Because of this buff. Because, well, they're strength five anyway, so I'm strength ah. ten is standard, now strength twelve. Nice. But it doesn't really matter. Wounding on twos. Um, let's. I haven't used CP reroll in the fight phase yet. No, you haven't, no. So let's roll that. And that's four dead. And it's Five AP. Five damage. AP. Oh no, it's AP minus three. Okay. Right, so any sixes. So I need sixes to keep them alive. Yeah. You've got four through. Um, one six will keep this squad alive. No sixes. Nope. Flat three damage with the hammers. Nasty. So. And so the hell blasters disappear, and that's the end of Gene Steeler Cult's turn two, and how quickly the tide has shifted. I don't need to take a morale test for the jumpy dudes here because of Ultramarine's chapter tactics, but at the end of that turn, you have got overwhelming firepower, you yep. have secured objective three, so mm -hmm. it's four points to two, but more than that, You've completely crushed my right flank as they come flying in. And some of these guns are going to be out of range unless I move them. And you've started defending objective yeah. one. They, so they did not consolidate forward. They yeah. might not get it. I'm, I'm considering discarding it, but for the moment, let's see if I can get it. Well, it means that uh, I'm going to have to divert a considerable amount of firepower trying to get rid of them to stop you getting two more points. Because if you're on there at the end of my turn, it'll be six points to two. Well, and let's not forget... There is a Primus, not a Primus. Patriarch and another Gene Stealer cult unit. Yes. It's pure strain Gene Stealer unit. So, um, claws. Lots of claws and teeth are still in reserve. The 13th need to do some work this turn. Let's go on to the Space Marines. Turn two. Here are the orders for the 13th. Kingslayer, cut off the head of this cult insurrection. And unfortunately, he's hiding right in the corner and will almost be impossible to kill. As well as Defend 4, which is deep within the enemy lines, that is going to be tricky as well. But Defend 5, I'm on that. It seems like High Command want me to defend this installation. Here we are after the Space Marines movement phase. I've started to defend 5. I'm not going to be able to defend 4, which is over there. And as for Kingslayer, well, um, he's way back here directing the cult from the edge of the Badlands. And he's... Basically, if he tucks in there for the rest of the game, he will be unkillable. Um, so it's unlikely that I'm going to get very many points this turn. Let's face it, uh, some Gene Stealers could pop out there and come charging in a non this unit and stop me defending that objective as well. And it's four points to two. So what I need to do is kill as much as possible. So um, the scouts that were here have pushed forward, trying to push that uh, that um, cult ambush thing back, you know, that nine inches when he can come in. That's why they're there, to try and keep these safe. And Captain Kovic should have jumped up and over and gone for them. Um, but there's a psyche here. Suffer not the witch to live. So he's coming after him. It just makes narrative sense to me. And there's a Russ. Need to reach out and touch that Russ. We've measured up. The Laz cannons on this Razorback are in range. And the Dreadnought can see him as well through the top the turret just poking up so um take out the uh layman russ and then try and nail as many of these gene stealers as i can the squad that was here jumped back inside the jumpy dudes that were there that are kept in my pocket are here so there's a lot of firepower coming into those gene stealers they might not be there at the end of this turn you don't you don't want to move those hell blasters up because then i can heroically intervene into you because my warlord trait. No, I'm going to kill them uh, and stop enough. you defending that. Fair enough. And then draw these to the edge if I don't kill them. That's mm. that's the plan. <laughs> and then um, uh, Dantioch and Krieger have moved this way to give the bubble, the re-roll bubble to uh, this unit of jumpy dudes. Yeah. This squad here didn't jump back inside the Razorback because I'm conscious that uh, if I moved that way then I could suddenly have a lot of gene stealers right in my back corner. And I don't want gene stealers in my back corner. So they are keeping an eye on the rear. Guns spreading out left, right and all over the place. Hopefully there'll be a wash of firepower coming in on these cultists that came out of the Badlands. Hopefully there'll be a dead uh, layman Russ. And as I said, suffer not the witch to live. So let's go on to the shooting phase. 
Start off with this unit of jumpy dudes. Now, if I was intelligent, I'd have kept them within range of the captain, but they're out of range. So let's fire um, 12 shots down into that last cannon team there. Hitting on threes. Six hits, wounding on threes. Uh, five wounds at minus one, but plus one because of the barricade. So... Five months. Nope, dead. Okay, they're dead. And then Kovic will chuck a grenade at this witch. Twos. Rerolling ones because he's a captain. I oh, know. The grenade bounces. Maybe he forgot to pull the pin out. Um, right. There's a big squad over here. Let's fire 12 assault cannon razorback shots into that squad. Already measured up. Can reach out and touch. I'm hitting on threes. And I'm re-rolling ones because Dantioc is screaming in the gunner's ears. And that was 10 hits again. Yeah. And this is strength six versus toughness three. three. They should be toughness four. Mm -hmm. Toughness three. Uh, Winning on twos, re-rolling ones. So that's ten wounds at minus one. Yep. Ten six up saves now. Yep. No, you just can't. six. There's only eight in it, so there's that. Yep. Oh dear, oh dear. Right. Twin link Laz cannon razor back at the Russ over there. Hitting on threes. <gasps> and no re-rolls. And both of the shots fire wide. You can see Pia. Um, yeah, yeah, well, Eaton. Yes, I will. I'll see Pia. I've got a <laughs> bunch left. And I fail. Right, that didn't work. So I spent another CP on Wisdom with the Ancients for the reroll hit rolls of one with a Dreadnought. He stays still this turn, and I'm going to fire at the Layman Russ. So. Three to hit with the last cannons. They both hit. And it's strength eight, uh, strength nine versus toughness eight. Yep. So threes to wound. They both wound at minus three. So you have a six up save now. And nope. 2d6 damage. Layman Russ have 12 wounds. Yep. And six. that's six wounds. And now let's reach out and touch with the missile launcher, which hits and wounds at minus two, sir. Ooh, oh, do and nope. you fell that save as well. Six wins to get through. D6 damage. Please put a little six here. Yeah. For the Emperor. I rolled a two. Uh, is that caught? It's a two. It's okay. a two. All right, four wounds left on the Layman Russ. Took four LAS cannons and a missile launcher there, and it's still chugging along, but it's injured, it is smoking, and it will be nerfed next time it shoots. Now this Razorback will spool up its guns and rain death into these gene stealers. I hit on threes. And I re-roll ones because I'm right next to my captain. Nine hits, strength six versus toughness four, wounding on threes, re-rolling those ones because the lieutenant. Uh, seven wounds? Yes. Seven five up lightning reflex, reflex saves because they dodge right and dodge left. Yeah, and four die. Right, they're not dead yet. So I've got this unit of jumpy dudes and we're in six inch range of the captain lieutenant. Six shots each. This is 30 shots. Hitting on threes. And I re-roll all those ones. With the re-roll, that was 22 hits. Wounding on fours and re-rolling ones. Wounding on threes. Threes and re-rolling ones. That was 18 wounds. That was good, wasn't it? These guys are so good against low infantry. 35 points each. This is 350 points for 10 of them. But they are pretty good. 11 points each for a guardsman. Are they? Yeah. Okay. They are pretty. I find jumpy dudes stack quite well. Yeah, there you go. Fives. Uh, oh, that was... That's a surprise. What? That was not terrible. Two, four, six, eight. Eight? Two, four. Still enough to wipe the unit, though. Is Just it? enough. Well done, boys. Right, one unit down. Now I need to stop these guys defending that objective there. So the Hellblasters will unload. I am within six inch range of my Dreadnought. I'm not overcharging because it'll get me up to damage two, but you ignore I damage. I reduce damage by one. By one. So it's it'll pointless. do one damage anyway. So uh, threes to hit, re-rolling ones because of Wisdom of the Ancients. And Assault Plasma Incinerate is a strength six. So toughness four. So threes, threes to wound. Only three wounds. Ooh. AP minus four, you uh, are in cover. AP but, minus uh, four doesn't matter, I'm armor five, but I do get a six up, feel no pain. Okay. Thanks to the icon ward nearby. Uh, nope, so I lose one and a half. Uh, okay. Two that, wins apiece. That could have been better.
And that is the end of the Space Marine shooting phase. Uh, the boys are forming a line and heroically trying to push back this flank here, managing to wipe out the unit of Gene Stealers, but the Aberrants and uh, this other squad are untouched and continue to rampage in. In fact, when we look at board control, Gene Stealer Colts control most of the board. There were some successes over here, however, have wiped out a couple of squads of infantry units. And now we need to make a charge. Can Kovic goes in one more time? Yes, he can. We will overwatch. Overwatch didn't sting. So now I get D3 attacks on the charge with the Teeth of Terror. Three again! <laughs> He's revving that chainsaw like really a madman. Someone took the fuel on it. Yeah, twos to hit. Rerolling ones because he's a captain. So six hits. It's strength five, your toughness. Three, I think. Yeah. So um, I'm wounding on threes. And it's AP minus two, two damage each. Uh, I'm dead then. I've only Is got he? five up save. No invan, five up save. Nice. Only four wounds, I think. Four or five wounds. So he's dead anyway. Die much. Die. Die. Right, and that is the end of turn two for the Space Marines. Killing some units over here. Whittling down that layman Russ, I've done some work, but I score no points. I've started to defend this objective. However, the Aberrants have successfully defended that objective. So even though the Gene Stealer Colts are low on models, it's six points to two. They are in the ascendancy and there's still some more to come spilling out from reserves. Let's go on to Gene Stealer Colts. Turn three. It's six points to two in favour of the cultists, and now they want to take ground and sow fear and terror. Secure objective two, secure objective one, and psychological warfare. Make the 13th run away. That isn't going to happen. We do not bend. Here we are after the cult's movement phase before the uprising thingy me jig. Here's one of the objectives they need to secure. That isn't going to happen. But their warlord down here is securing objective one so it's going to be seven points to two at the end of this turn unless I manage to defend that objective there and get a couple of points back again we can see the aberrants and this other unit making their full way forward pushing their advantage up this flank um, the layman Russ and this unit over here staying still so uh, now we're rolling to see the cult ambush table result. You yep. spent another CP on... I spent another CP on Meticulous Uprising, nice. taking me down to two remaining. Okay. And I get to roll two dice on the table. Okay. So, come on, I need at least a six. It's got to get a one-six. I know. Statistically, nice. statistically speaking. There's a yeah, six. Yeah, I'll take that. There's a six. I'll take that. And so the Patriarch and the last unit of Gene Stealers appear out of the shadows there, more than 12 inches away from the Jumpy Dude, so I can't do an or spec scan and fire, fire at them in the turn they arrive. And then the Patriarch and Gene Stealers get to move forward as though it were the movement phase, which includes advancing, which is lovely. And Gene Stealers and uh, Broodlords can charge after advancing, so suddenly they're right up in my grill. Let's go on to the psychic phase. So the Patriarch is casting mass hypnosis on this second unit of Inceptors here. This, so this will stop them from firing Overwatch, yes. which is a big deal. And they'll fight their minus one to hit and they fight last Yes. in the fight phase. So I need a seven. Ten, I get it. <clears throat> nice. That's a big help for me. Opening up the shooting phase, the Neophyte hybrids cleared away the last two scouts that were on um, the installation, and now the Layman Russ is firing through at the gap at the Dreadnought that fired at him. So, opening up with... Heavy Bolters, okay. and on fives, because I'm damaged. Three hits, wounding on fives. That's one, one wound at AP minus one, so I need a four. Yep. Oh, takes a damage. Battle Cannon. Yep. Eight shots. Eight shots is not too shabby, nope. but you are hitting on five. I am hitting on five, so that is two. Two hits. Strength eight, toughness seven. These to wins. Two wins, wins and minus two. So I need fives. And make one fair one. D3 damage. For one, of course. <laughs> That's all right. And two wounds off the dreadnought. He's got six remaining. And then closing out the shooting phase, we had some small arms rattle into the Hell Blasters and into the unit of Inceptors here. And he do manage to kill one. So I pulled away the one at the back, trying to make that Gene Stealer charge as long as possible. Now that's the end of the Gene Stealer Colt shooting phase. Now we're about to get nasty.
Starting off the charge phase, this unit going into the Hellblasters. They can't overwatch because they're hallucinating right now. Ooh. Too many mushrooms. And that's an eight. That will do. They get in. So the Acolyte hybrids make it into the Jumpy Dudes and then the Icon Ward and this chap tried to get in as well but failed. Now we're across to the Gene Stealers. Now they charged, declared a multi-charge into this unit of Jumpy Dudes and this unit of Jumpy Dudes. I've done my overwatch with these. Caused no damage. Now obviously it's auto into them, but it's going to be an 8 inch charge to get into the second squad here. Yep. So good luck sir. Hopefully I'll be able to do. That's a 6. You haven't used the CP reroll. I yet. haven't used the CP reroll. Do you they, want to? I do. They, I mean they can probably take care of them, but it gets yeah. me closer. Yeah. And potentially I can tie them up, so yeah. let's see. Yes, an eight. it's just enough to get in. This is where the units end up after the charge phase. The genes do the string all the way around here. The Patriarch is in assault. So basically, both squads of Inceptors are in trouble and the Aberrants have made it in to the Hellblasters. No damage on Overwatch anywhere. And you start with the Aberrants? Yes, because the this unit Jumpy Dudes have to strike last because of the power. Yes. So if you spend the two CP to interrupt me, it's either on the Hellblasters or them. Right. They've got fewer attacks and yes. I've got an in bun. I figured I'll do try and do as much damage as possible with okay. Aberrants nice. before you strike back. So, oh, sorry, hitting on six attacks, hitting on threes, thanks to. Yep. I'm just in range, I checked. Okay. Hitting on threes. Ugh. Doesn't help. Okay. Winning on twos. Three six ups. I need sixes to keep them alive. Uh, no. Three die. So three of them just get smushed. Right, from that assault to this unit of Jumpy Dudes here, I have spent two command points to interrupt because I think every little, little helps right now. They've got two attacks each, Sergeant's got one extra attack. So uh, it puts me down to three command points. So I hit on threes, everything hits. Mm -hmm. On strength four versus toughness four. And I get four oh. wounds again, so four, five up, lightning reflex saves. And three die. Yeah. So that uh, does take me below ten models. So does I'm it? down I'm down to three attacks apiece now. That nice. was a good that was a good play. Next up the Patriarch is swinging in at this unit of jumpy dudes that just attacked him. Uh he's got six attacks and he hits on twos. He's mean. Uh four Not hits. Really that. But he's strength six, right? He has strength six. And he re-rolls to wound with he his does. monstrous rending claw. So threes to wound. With the re-roll and you need it. Okay. That is one dead. One is dead because one's on one wound, and that's AP minus a lot. And then these are minus AP minus three. three so. so one six, and strangely enough, that unit will stay alive because they have two wounds each. It's DC damage though. Is it? it is. Okay, it won't stay alive. They're dead nope. anyway. You're dead, dead anyway. The Patriarch consolidates, then the Gene Stealers pile in. So they're three attacks each now instead of four. But there's five of them there that can strike the unit of Jumpy Dudes and they're hitting on twos because the Patriarch is nearby. Uh, rending Claws, so no rerolls. So 13 hits there, that's nice. And then fives to win. Yeah. No, uh, yes, because I'm not in range of the banner. Fives to win, sixes are rending. There's a, quite a few sixes all of a sudden. That is six sixes. Six that is some, are they AP minus four? They're AP minus four. Yeah, so that's one dead, another dead, another dead. And then four wins. That was an incredible roll for once. And these are minus one. One. Uh, and another one is dead. That's the unit, So you wipe out four of them. Yeah, and because one died in the shooting phase to strength three pistols, that's the unit wiped out. Then the gene stealers consolidate forward, and now we select this unit that charged. Yep. And they pile in three, and then consolidate three, mm. and that Razorback is not shooting. Excellent gameplay there. Then the Razorback struck back and did no damage, and the two Hellblasters struck back at the Aberrants and did no damage as well. And then we were on to the morale phase. No morale to take for the uh, Space Marines because they're Leadership 9 because they're Voltron Marines and no morale take to take for the Gene Stealers because they're Leadership very high as well. So that's the end of Gene Stealer Cults turn 3 and you get another point for scoring Objective 1. Yep. It stopped me from defending that objective there so it's 7 points to 2. But more than that you've pushed me right back into the corner. I know you've only got a couple of squads here and a couple of squads in the backfield, and that's it. But uh, the, the 13th are really on the back foot now. 
crushed back into the corner of this battle grid here and shutting down that amount of firepower and taking out the two units of jumpy dudes might mean that your infantry finally will be safe. We will have to see. It's very, very interesting as we head into Space Marines. Turn three. Here are my objectives in turn three. High Command really want me to defend things. I ditched defend four at the end of my last turn. And look at this, they want me to defend this site. Defend two, defend five, and Kingslayer cut the head off this insurrection. Here we are after the movement phase for the Space Marines. So few assets left. It's been a bloodbath on both sides, to be honest. Here's objective two, which I need to defend, which this unit have moved forward to defend. There's objective five that I need to defend, but more importantly, Captain Alexander Kovic is coming back to take on that uh, Primarch? Patriarch. Pr Patriarch. I think he can have him. If he manages to take out a Patriarch in close combat, he will be accepted in amongst the ranks of the 13th. And as for Kingslayer, well, the unit of Hellblasters have broken out. And because of Ultramarine's chapter tactics, I will be able to fire and try and kill him so long as... I take out these aberrants first. So the unit that was inside the Razorback have got out, making sure the Melter Melter is close enough. And then the Dreadnought can potentially fire in at these as well, which means that these guys can fire down and try and kill him, but he's got five wounds, I can't kill him in one turn of shooting. But maybe next turn, maybe. If I take out that King, not only is it Warlord, but it's also D3 points for Kingslayer, so that could be game-changing stuff. So quite simply, Burn away as many of the cultists from my front rank as possible. You could kill him. How? You've got four shots. Yes. If you overcharge. Oh yeah, that's true. You can do eight wounds, potentially. Yes. Yes, potentially eight wounds. It's them, it's minus one damage, not I him. didn't move him. No. Maybe I should move him. Yeah, let's move him. So move the Dreadnought. <laughs> <laughs> so we're in the reroll one range, but it means it's going to be harder to kill these because part one is kill them, then part two is kill him. I'm it's going to keep shot. my mouth shut from now on, I think. Uh, thank you for that. <clears> when it comes it. to uh, tactics. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. Let's go into the shooting phase and pull the trigger. This Razorback fell back so it can't fire. This Razorback, on the other hand, can sow death into those Gene Stealers. So 12 shots, hitting on threes, and re-rolling those two ones. Three ones. Three ones. Eight hits, wounding on threes, and re-rolling a one. Ooh, eight wounds. Look oh, at those. can we just make that my saves? Target acquired there. Yeah, let's can we, see. Can we just make that my saves? Well, good luck. That was uh, three. three. So five die. Next up, this squad. Some of them rapid firing. Some of them not rapid firing into the gene stealers. Threes to hit, re rolling ones, and then fours to wound. And there's only two wounds there. No cover for them, not too far from the barricade, yeah, I gotta presume. Be, gotta be an inch. Yeah. <laughs> Saved. And, and then the melter fires in, hits, wounds. Need a five again? Five again. Ooh, oh. Nope. Okay, that burns through one of them. Running out of gun already, however, there's still three gene stealers left. You've got two command points left, which is very interesting. Right, let's go down here. Um, the two melters from this squad will fire into the aberrants, and the rest, I think, uh, will rapid fire them or the gene stealers. Now, they're going to charge the gene stealers, so they will rapid fire the cultists. Yep, good position there. Yeah. Yep. So the two melters. Miss, hit, hits. hit, hit. Twos. Wounding on twos. Both wound. I don't uh, think you get a save. I minus do not. I do not. So the first one. And this is minus one, right? So one's dead because yeah. he was in a wound. And then the other one. So long as it's greater than a two. Nope. Five. Another one dies. Nice. And then we will rapid fire two of them into there. Say, and chuck a grenade. So the grenade will six <laughs> times. <laughs> Obviously, that was a frag grenade. <laughs> so, uh, six hits and it hits on threes. Oh, that didn't Okay, for all not that, I'm happy. Strength three, toughness three. Two wounds. Five ups. And you we'll make see. them both. And then the two rapid fire shots with the remaining chaps. One hit. Wow. And a wound. 
Nope. And one dies. You know, remember at the beginning of the turn, before I picked the camera up, I was thinking about keeping the Razorback locked up with them, so they couldn't, they can't fall back and charge. I should have kept the Razorback locked up with them because of that firepower. Mm -hmm. I've only killed one. Yep. Mind you, I have got these guys, and they are going to charge the Gene Stealers. So over here, let's fire the Bolter into them from the Captain. Hits on a two, rerolls ones. And then he will wound on, their toughness three, right? Yep. So wound on threes. That's two at AP minus one from this angle. Cover, yes, no. Yeah, let's say yes. Okay. Two five ups. Two five ups. And one, one more dies. And then the side, bolt, pistol, or grenade. Let's chuck a single crack grenade. Strength six one. Okay. Which we roll ones. That's a hit. And strength six means it's Seriously? a two to wound. Yep. At minus one, but plus one because the cover. Yep. No. More dice. So I think I killed three. So leadership is a thing. Leadership is a thing. Koviatch will chuck a grenade at the Patriarch as well. And it hits. And he's toughness, strength six, toughness five, five, I think. Doesn't wound. Doesn't wound. Right, Wisdom of the Ancients on the Dreadnought one more time. Need to kill the Aberrant. Two Laz Cannons. One a hit. Wounds on a two. One wound at AP minus three. No save. D6 damage. <laughs> Takes one wound. Takes one wound. You want a CP yet? Yes, I do. Ah, oh, he's dead. dead. Aberrant. So I'm down to one command point left. And now this unit that fell back with minus one to hit are going to overcharge and go for kill, slay the warlord. Now this is risky. The first guy. Footage. Rerolls, hit rolls of one. And that becomes dead. a one and he's dead. And the second guy hits. <laughs> so one dies and on a four, one, two, three, it was the sergeant. So the sergeant dies a heroic death. And now I've got three hits on them. You need to roll a one. If you don't roll spent a one, seven. if you don't roll a one, he's dead. And I spent a command point in the shooting phase already. Okay. So yeah, 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 for him. So I Oh yeah, yeah. So one's to wound him, no save, uh, two wounds each, he's got five to get through, one, one, and he stays alive. For the Emperor. No. Nope. That okay. is Slay the Warlord. And, Mikey C, thank you so much. Thank you for so much for mentioning the Dreadnought thing. Thank you for just giving me uh, two to four command points. What can I say? I'm a nice guy. Right, on to the Laz Cannon Razorbacks. I was hoping you'd take Gene Steelers from the other side so I could put two Laz Cannons into the Patriarch and soften them up for my jump captain. That was completely unintentional. I never even thought of that. <laughs> that was just pure luck. Just pure luck. So I'm going to put two Laz Cannons downtown into that Layman Russ. One more time. Threes to hit. And threes to wound. Does a wound. One six up save. No six. Nope. No. So D6 damage. It's got four left. One. I'll take that. one. That's the end of my shooting phase. Death of the Warlord, death of the Aberrant. Some casualties taken in this front rank squad here. Mm. Now we're going to charge. These guys are going to go in. Hmm. <laughs> I think everyone needs to go in. Everyone's going in. They'll go in there. They'll go in there. He's going in there. We're going to do lots of Overwatch off camera and then we'll get back to you in the fight phase. Right, the charge phase is over and I had to burn my last CP. No CP is remaining for Dantioch, Captain Dantioch, to get in there. I rolled a snake eyes. But in the end, the Lieutenant and the Captain are in. I need to take out these Gene Stealers. Can't have them rampaging around all over the place. This squad made it into the... I forget what they're called. And, I like hybrids. And Dantioch is in on the uh, Broodlord Patriarch thingamajig. Now, I'm aware you've got two command points in your hand and yes. can pay to interrupt. So... He's got a three up in vulnerable save versus him, but you have got rerolled wounds. So I think I need to start there. This is two damage each? Two right? damage each. Uh, he's, yeah, that's probably why. You can probably so kill me off. He gets D3 extra attacks with the Teeth of Terror. And he gets two this time. Oh, not a, not a six again. Not a six again. Oh, so six attacks in total. Um, he hits on twos. Everything hits. It's strength five versus toughness five. Excellent. Minus two, two damage. How many wins got? Six. Six wins. Hmm. So fours. Two. That is a good number. Just two wins. <clears throat> that is a good number. Two five up and buns. Ah, 
takes two damage. Then he takes two damage. That was not expected. No. no honestly, that was I really thought you'd kill him. So did I. I didn't think I'd kill him. I thought I'd kill him. Look, you, you've given him a little manicure. Nice. One of the nails is snapping nice. off. So. Are you paying to interrupt or am I going to keep going? Do you know what? I am. I think these guys have got a good chance of doing some damage and if they can survive yes. or even kill you, yes. I think I've got a good shot of doing something with them. So you're spending your last command points I am as going well. to spend my last two We're command points. We're all out. Let's do this. Right. Three normal guys. I'm going to go with the rending claws. Okay. Uh, and then I get the cultist knives as well. Nice. Yeah, three extra attacks for them. Um, freeze to hit. Freeze to hit. Two, uh, four hits. Force to wound. Sixes are rending. Okay. One. One wound. One wound. And that's AP minus one, right? Uh, yes, AP minus four one. Four up. And I save it. You're good. Right. Then I've got two with the rock cutters. Right. These are minus one to hit for are the they? rock cutter. Okay. Yeah. So force to hit. Please do well. Please don't do well. Two hits. Strength eight, I believe. Really? Yeah, nice. the okay. times two. Uh, that's two wins. I'll just double check that for the rock cutters. Yeah, minus four AP. Minus four? Yep, so no save. Wow. Then we have the Cultist Knife attacks. Uh, the rock saws replace the Cultist Knife. Yes, so they there's... do, so they don't get them. So three, three hits, yes. force to wound, one at no AP. One, one at no AP, one three up. Yes, mm. so you only kill two. Not sure that was worth the command points. Maybe I'd have been better spent over here, but yeah, maybe. we'll see. We we'll shall see. see. All right, so we're on to the um, captain and lieutenant. Right now, Captain Dantioch is going to strike these gene stealers. He has five attacks and he hits on twos because he's a captain and he rerolls ones because he's a captain. However, he strength four versus toughness four, so force to wound. Three wounds. Could no AP, enough. it's just his fists. It's no two die. Two die. One is left. Which that's the captain. That's the captain. That's the lieutenant. So you want to take these two away because yep. he will not be able to pile in and attack you. Mm -hmm. I'll pile him in anyway, but uh, never mind. Right now the tacticals will uh, attack. There's two normal tacticals, and the sergeant's got two attacks, and the sergeant's got a chainsaw because he dropped his bolt pistol. So let's hit on threes, and let's wound on threes. Yep. Four wounds, mm. ouch. And you save two, two of them, so two more die. The Gene Stealer consolidates into the Lieutenant because the Lieutenant doesn't have an Invan, so you're hitting on... Twos, because I'm within range of the Patriarch. Nice. I checked, so twos to hit. Yes. Yep. Four, three hits there. Fours to win, sixes are rending. Two wins, no two minus wins. one. Two fours, uh, he takes a wound. And uh, now we're on to the Patriarch. Patriarch. I think they start off with five Primaris Lieutenants. I'll have yep. to check. Six attacks. Right. Two's to hit. Two's to hit. That's yeah. nasty. Everything hits. Three's to win with rerolls. That's... Everything so wins. Two or a flat well, six damage, I believe. I've got my shield. So yeah. Oh, no, I mean, you need to roll them separately because they're... Are they? The sixes are, I believe... Six damage with what? the monstrous rending claws. Yo, three damage, sorry. They're AP minus six and three damage. Okay, so three up invulnerable saves with my storm shield. Yeah. And then these are just... You made them both. Yeah. And, and then these, these are four. three up invulnerable saves. Yeah. Look Could at you not? That. Could you not make every save? Captain Alexander Kovic is making a name for himself on this battle grid. Has a new hero of the 13th been born? Now we're into the morale phase. Now, gene stealers within six inches of the patriarch are automatically immune. So this chap doesn't need to take a morale test. Nope. But these guys, they lost five in this squad of troops. Mm -hmm. So um, let's see what they get. On a three, three or less. Five <laughs> plus five is... I'm all but one remaining. Okay. That's annoying. So that's the end of the morale phase. One troop here left alive, one gene stealer left alive, and the patriarch left alive. And at the end of the turn, I've started to defend objective two, but I don't get any points for that. I'm not defending objective five as these two heroes battle each other right next to the entrance of the installation. However, I do get a point 
for Slay the Warlord. Yep. And D3 extra points for King Slayer. Thank you very much, to Mikey yes. C. Oh, come on! And that's the big three. <laughs> the battle for Cable 17 continues. It's seven points to six in favour of the Gene Stealer Colts. Let's go on to turn four. Here are the orders for the Gene Stealer Colts. Secure one, secure two, and big game hunter. So here we are after the Gene Stealer Colts movement phase in turn four. Um, this chap advanced across to there, scoring you that objective, making yep. it eight points to six, which is good. And the Icon Ward come busting forward to join this combat here. But you're not securing objective two, and you said mistakes were made or something. Yes, I completely forgot that he allows Gene Stealer Culture units to pass morale. Yes. So I assumed this guy was going to flee, so I moved in to attack him. Right. Had I not... I could have moved after subject to me. Yeah. I, I needed to kill them, but yeah. I mean, I probably wouldn't have done it, but I could have moved out to secure that or do some damage. Or if you failed a single save on him yeah. to die, yeah. that would have been nice. He could have jumped over and then he died and then he comes around that way, smites, kills, and then you'd have got that one. That's what I was hoping for. But in the moment, I have what? One, two, three, four, five, six. 16 models left on the board. <laughs> yeah. And the units in the backfield standing <clears throat> firm. Yes. So let's go on to the psychic phase. Yep. So the Patriarch is smiting away. Good luck, sir. It's the only chance of getting through your end bun. I said that as a super smite. That's a super smite. That's greater than a 10, but it isn't a 12. So it's D6 damage. I've got four wounds to get through. Can you kill him with mind bullets? See, should have saved that command point reroll. Yeah. Should have saved those command points. Yes. Big money, big money. Yes! That's a five. Kovic. Wow. Falls. Now that makes things very interesting. That means that uh, Patriarch is free to charge. Let's go on to the shooting phase. So in the shooting phase, a mortar fired up and over. Over here did no damage. And then the Rust picked on the Razorback. Hitting on fives. Did no damage. That's the end of the shooting phase. Now we've got some charges coming on. So right, so the Patriarch charging the Lieutenant and my Warlord. You need a 5 and a 7 to get into yep. the Warlord. And seven that's a enough. 7. We could see a dead Warlord, which will be game winning. Starting off the combat phase with the Patriarch. Uh, lots and lots of attacks. Into who? Into Warlord. Good. If I can kill him and get Warlord. Yeah, it I can could be okay. game changing. Yeah. yeah. And two's to hit. Two's to hit. Yep. I think he hits every time, that guy. He's a bit mean. Threes to win with three rolls. Sixes are good. Every... That's one flat three damage yes. and then five normal okay. ones. Okay, so flat three damage, uh, four up iron halo save. <sighs> to make. And then five four up iron halo saves. And oh, come <laughs> on. My saving has been incredible. Can you fail an in one? I, I failed one. one. I failed one. One damage. One damage, which I ignore <laughs> on a six with Iron Resolve. You're going to roll a six, yeah. This will be salt in the wounds, wouldn't it? I don't oh, roll a six. Oh, what a shame. He takes a wound. He's got seven wounds to start off with with Iron Resolve, so he's down to six. Now the Icon Ward is striking. This unit of Tactical Marines here. He's got how many attacks? Four attack space with his Rending Claws. Yes. Hitting on a three. Yes. He's got mean, isn't he? Yep. Wounding on threes because it's plus one strength thanks to nice. his eye cut relic. Nice. Uh, that is three wounds at minus one. Okay, so three four up saves. Um, two and that's got a wiped out. There's and then his cultist knife. Yes. One yes. hat. One wound, no minuses. Three up. Yep. Okay, the sergeant is still hanging in there. Um, so it'll be these two gone. And now we're on to non-charging units. I will choose this guy to strike snippy, because snippy, snippy. probably kill him. Yes. Uh, two attacks, hitting on fours. Yes. One, one hit. hit. Two's to win. One dead. He's dead. Kills him. Those units consolidate like that, and now we're on to one of my units. Uh, so the Gene Stealer will be going next. So obviously I'm going to do Lieutenant Krieger, and I'm going to split his attacks. Because what's the worst that could happen? Two into the Gene Stealer, mm -hmm. and two into the Broodlord. Definitely going to kill this Gene Stealer. <laughs> Primaris Lieutenants hit on twos. And they, he both hits. This is the Gene Stealer. And then the other guy. And re-rolled hit rolls of. So they hit yep. two on the Prey Truck, two on the Gene Stealer. Gene Stealer I'm going to wound on fours. And re-roll ones. And I wound twice. Two five up and runs. 
Nope. They kill the gene stealer and two on the patriarch. Wounds one. Oh, sorry. Within six, I get two six up funeral pains. Okay. The banner bearer. No, he's nope. still dead. And then one on the patriarch. He's got a four up save. He's got four up armor. Does he yeah. have power weapon? Yes. So five up in one. Yes. Saved. He's good. Nice. Right now it's Captain Dantioch's time to strike back with his fists. Primaris captains have five attacks. So I'm hitting on twos. And I'm strength four, so I'm winning on five. And I reroll ones. I get two wounds. Two wounds in, two four up armor save, yes, sir. Yes, no. No. He's and good. We fight each other too. I can see another psychic smite coming in. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the end of the phase. And that's the end of Gene Steeler Colt's turn four. No morale test to make. It was seven points to six, but you get a point for securing that objective over there. So it's eight points to six. However, I have defended objective two. So it's eight points each. The 13th are clawing their way back into this. Well, you're doing all the clawing. I'm doing a lot of <laughs> scrabbling and shooting. So it's eight points each as we go into Space Marines. Turn four. Here are the orders for the 13th High Command really want me to get Objective 5, which is right by the entrance of the installation. Secure 5, Defend 5, and Big Game Hunter take out that layman Russ. Here we are after the Space Marines movement phase. Captain Dantioch and Lieutenant Krieger have fallen back out of combat. Like the cowards they are. Tactical retreat, mate. Tactical retreat. And ordering the firing squad either side of that Patriarch to take it out. Meanwhile, the Razorback over here advanced, so it won't be shooting, but I am securing five and I need to defend it as well. And uh, so that's secure and defend. And then take out that Layman Russ. Well, shots from this last cannon Razorback and the Dreadnought shuffled across to the right one more time and he will open up. But before we do that, let's overcharge and fire at him. <laughs> Mistakes were made. Mm. That was hilarious. I was trying to go for a clean sweep, and uh, yeah, two laser cannons at him, fours because I moved one hit. Threes, that's a wound, six up save, sir. Oh, um, my luck's my luck's turned around. Missile launcher hits, Miss no, misses because I moved. Yeah, okay. So over here from <laughs> this twin linked razorback, in on the layman rust. One hit. I need a three. I wound. You need a six up save. Can you do it twice in a row? Oh, no. you need D6 one or damage. two. One or a two. D6 damage. It's got three left. No, I don't need a one or two. I need a three or more. You need a one or two. <laughs> <laughs> the Lehman Russ is still alive. Oh, I'm sorry for that. Oh, it's that is hilarious. horrendous. Right, okay. This Razorback, which stays still, is going to fire everything at that squad there. The Icon Ward's closest. Threes and twos. Uh, do you get to ignore damage on sixes? I do, I do, because I'm within okay. range of myself. No, he's dead. He's dead. That's dead Icon Ward. Okay, and then uh, my captain who fell back will uh, hit him. He hits on threes because yep. he fell back. And he will wound on threes. And it's minus one, so two sixes. Sixes. Right, no, he's dead as well. Dead. And now it comes down to this squad here with the melter combi melter firing in and then I'm going to rapid fire everything else. Yep. So let's build up to that, shall we? Let's rapid fire the shots first. Uh, only three hits. Mm -hmm. I need fives. Yep. Two wounds, yeah, two four up saves. Not too bad when you roll like that. Does he get cover? For... Yeah, he's got to be within an inch of the yeah. barricade. He's not in a train. Well, I'll try and get everything I can. I see some. Okay, that's okay, that's okay. So, melter shots. Both yeah, hit. Three to wound. Three to wound. One, One wound. wound. One, five up and one. Yes, and he, he survives. he is alive. In fact, that was a really bad shooting phase. In fact, that's the end of everything phase. I've fired everything because so much death has happened on the table. He's going to get to charge again and potentially get Slay the Warlord. I don't get Big Game Hunter. I that haven't was really started, unlucky. I haven't started defending Objective 5, but I have secured it. Yes. So it's 9 points to 8. Yes. Going it's into turn it's five. as close as close can be. Let's go on to Cult. Turn 5.
The Gene Steeler Cult are one point behind and this is a good set of orders despite the few units they have left. Secure two, secure four and master the warp. Here we are after the movement phase for the Gene Steeler Cult and they could win this. They could win this. They're on objective two here. They kill that attack squad. They secure objective two. Secure objective four. That squad back there with the mortar all this game have uh, finally got you a point. And now the Layman Russ could only move a couple of inches, but you advanced him all the way forward and pop smoke, which has hidden him out of the way of my Razorback because I still have big game hunter in my hand. So if I move the Razorback to try and kill that Layman Russ on one wound left, it'll be minus two, one for the smoke and one because I'm moving and firing with heavy weapons. So it may be on one wound left and it may be leaking oil all over the battle grid, but uh, that is kill point denial there. I like it. And the one chap here that should have been dead, <laughs> Which cursed my Hellblaster and his gun blew up in his hand. Has run and hidden for Linebreaker. And that's uh, Linebreaker as well. If the game ends this turn. So if you master the warp and score these objectives and get Linebreaker, suddenly you could get four points this turn. You will get two for defend five. Oh yes. So yes. it depends on what you it Depends on my draw. draw. Yeah. And if the game ends. I, it's, I would not have thought it was going to be this close by the end mm. of the game. No, by, by the end of my turn two, I really did not think... It would, Gene, Gene Steelers go one... They go this way. You, you either win an objective or you have nothing left. <laughs> well, you've got nothing left and you might win on an objective. So that's incredible. I might. Right, so the question is, Smite or I've... the one that prevents me from firing Overwatch because there's two Melters there? I'm mm. going to do Smite because... I've got six attacks. I need to kill this unit to secure this yes, objective. I would, I would have to hit and wound with everything okay. to kill them. So we'll okay. do smite. If you get 11 again. Nope. Smite nope. passes. But, that's Master of the Warp. But three. And that's, that's three good death. Enough. Now that leaves my Melter and my Combi Melter, which is a gamble. If I can hit you when you come in on Overwatch. However, I still have my Mortar. Ah. My mortar from the neophytes will also fire at these okay. guys. Let's fire up and over. Number D6 of shots. shots. Two. Hitting on fours. One hat. Doesn't win though. No. Okay. So that's and I guess Laz comes in. Uh, Laz cans in. Uh, Laz guns into this, but we can do that off. So the Razorback is uninjured, and that is the end of the shooting phase. It's all about this assault. You've mastered the warp. You are scoring that objective. You are line breaking. Can I kill you with melters? On Overwatch, four wounds left on that Patriarch. Two sixes for the Emperor. <laughs> <laughs> Literally breathing a sigh of relief there. He is in. He is in. And now he does his uh, monster number of attacks. Six attacks. Yeah. Watches are all five ones. <laughs> no, no, he hasn't hit a swing. He hasn't missed a no, swing. No, he's done well. Threes to win. Two. They're dead. They're dead. Minus four. They're Minus dead. six, sorry. They're dead. Everyone's dead, they dead. You have objective two. Yes. And at the end of that turn, you've got three points, because mm -hmm. we're not scoring line breaker yet. It might not be over. Nope. And I've got two. It's 11 points to 10. The Gene Stealer Cults are winning by one point. It swings one way, and the next, and the next. Let's go on to Space Marines, turn five. Here are my orders. Mission critical objective, get objective six. Big game hunter, kill that lame and Russ and get behind enemy lines. These are tough. So this is objective six. I need a one inch advance for that Razorback to get all the way over here. And I rolled on camera, because if I got higher, behind enemy lines could be a thing. Right, the Gene Steeler Colts are one point in the lead, and if it ends this turn, they're also getting line breaker, so there'll be two points in the lead. And I've got objective six, and that's the only objective. I can't get behind enemy lines. So I'll be one point behind and I'll lose unless I can get Big Game Hunter. I move the Razorback forward. It can see the Layman Russ. Getting down and having a look at that Dreadnought, there's no way the Dreadnought can move right or left to get shots in on the Layman Russ. So honestly, it's all about taking out that Layman Russ for a draw or hoping the game goes on to turn six. Meanwhile, Captain uh, Dantiok, Lieutenant Krieger jumped all the way back over here advancing to buff that Razorback to fire in at the Patriarch. 12 assault cannon shots into the Patriarch, hitting on threes and re-rolling ones. And that's 10 hits. Yep. 
And strength six versus toughness five. I need threes. And I reroll ones. Eight wounds. Yep. Minus one. Five off. And four to get through. He's dead. He finally falls. The Dreadnought can't see anything. So it's all about this Razorback trying to kill that Laban Russ on one wound. I imagine that tank gunner hit, mashing his foot on the floor on the accelerator pedal, just trying to get some cover, just trying to put some terrain between him and the gunners on these Razorbacks. So it's heavy. I've moved. It's a four. You pop smoke. It's a five. Just one of these, please. Oh. Target acquired. Strength nine, toughness eight, no command points left, need a three. <laughs> six a six, can I roll a six? Three sixes in a row, let's see. Oh, oh, it's gone. The layman Russ is gone. And that's the end of my turn five, making it 12 points each. 12 to 11. 12 to 11, and then you get line breaker. If the game ends if now. If the game ends now. And the player who went first roll, so you, that was you. Can my usual bad luck hold out? <clears throat> Good luck, sir. It ends! It's okay. a draw! And so the Gene Steeler cult comes spilling down from the Badlands, and this is the way the world ends. We beat each other into a bloody stalemate with just a unit of, what are these called? Neophyte hybrids. Neophytes, hybrids there, and one model line breaking. <laughs> The Hi prime is who started here, yes. and has pretty much gone the length of the board. He's half uh, the board length. Heading back there. to the hills over there, with just 11 models left on the table, it is a stalemate, it is a draw. And let's face it, if it had gone on to turn 6, I'd have got line breaker, I'd have got behind enemy lines, and I would have rinsed them away as well. It would have been a victory for the 13th, but as it is... This installation is up for grabs. What happened here is, in turn one, you didn't manage to take out those two scout <coughs> units. If you had, you'd have had yeah. much more penetration and my screening wouldn't have been effective because let's face it, when you did come in on that flank there, you yeah. hit like a truck. I got horrible with the ambush rolls, yes. but incredible charges. I know. Like I made about Nine, about four nine yeah, inch yeah, yeah. charges. I um, remember saying, um, oh, I won't film it, it'll be fine, it's too far away. And then you hit one, it's like, yeah. uh, and then you hit another one, it's like, I'm, 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 that's, there's no point picking up the camera now because you won't hit three, and then you hit the third one. Yeah. It's like, damn it, I need to film. <laughs> Do you know what? I've got 11 models, like, you've only got six. I mean, that's it, true. It, it is three ways of two characters and a dreadnought, that's but true. still, but still. And what about that heroic fights over here, making my invulnerable saves? And then the Patriarch saying, no, I will do this with my the, mind instead. The super smite over here, it yes. never works, but when it does, yeah. it was uh, incredible, incredibly so, strong. Alexandra Kovac from the Storm Guardians, who has been rescued by the 13th. Do you think he is worthy? He took out a squad there, he took out the thing there, he took, he took a charge from... Is he worthy? I think so. I mean, he did he, quite well. He held up in combat with Patriarch. If it wasn't for sneaky psychic mind bullets, yes, he would have. Don't know if he'd killed the Patriarch, but he would have got that objective stopped me from going yeah, after the you. The idea was the other captain lieutenant would have come in and joined in as well. Had would have ganged up on you without <laughs> super smite. There yeah. was no way I would have got to here and and got objective two. So yeah. it would have won. He potentially, if it wasn't for mind bullets, he would have won you the game. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Easily. So, um, yeah, but in the end, your mind bullets did win the game. That Patriarch is a dude. He's... He needs a better invun, but that's just me. Five up invun for a combat character is not amazing. No. And a four up armor save, but yeah. No, he... Against anything that doesn't have invun saves, he yes. just shreds them. Yes. Like, not... Well, didn't help that you were rolling and ones like they were one-ups. Well, you know, <laughs> the Emperor protects, the Emperor that, protects. Although I was rolling some good five-up in ones. I tell you what, I really enjoyed playing Gene Steeler Colts. It turned into a very, very tactical game. Um, placing models, making sure your screening units are effective, uh, making sure that there's no gaps in the backfield, uh, and then um, countering your charges correctly. It turned mm. into a very, I was thinking in between each game turn there. That made my brain itch. Um, so we'll close it there. Thank you so much for coming down. Oh, it was a pleasure. Don't forget to check out St. Andrew's Wargaming blog.
Yes? Yes. Yes, I got it right. And uh, for uh, battle reports and all sorts of stuff and, and yeah, awesome stuff. Thank you so much for coming down. This battle mat is brought to you by urbanmats.com. These deployment zone uh, objective counters and the dice on deploymentzone.tv. If you want any more Windows SEO battle reports, please check out deploymentzone.tv. It supports us and, uh, and helps us live the dream, or we're trying to live the dream. We're trying to make as many battle reports as we can, and it would be epic if we could do this for a living and we could only do it with your support. Anyway, I hope you guys really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed it. Did you enjoy it? I did, I did. I'll just say that the dice are awesome. The only roll ones and twos for me. And so, the only know, roll fives and sixes for yeah, me. We're taking yeah, them out right. of the same pot. They were the same dice. Anyway, thank you for listening. Happy Wargaming. <laughs>